Our guests on this episode of the podcast is some of the crew from Monahan's Marine. We have Brian Carreri, Matt Connor, Mark Panicchio, and Connor Hallway. The four of these guys join us for a conversation about the beginnings of Monahan's Marines since they started in 1961, their recent alliance with Situate Boatworks, the services that they provide, um, the level of experience that all of their employees have, and uh, and talk a lot about their passion for fishing. Um, as we've we've mentioned in a couple of recent podcasts, we've recently partnered with Monahan's. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of our uh, tackle maintenance and uh, and boat maintenance. Currently, a repower on our uh, on our twenty eight hundred one Parker line shy. Really excited to see where this partnership takes us. Uh, Monahan's and the crew at Monahan's are are awesome people. They they're a great local business. They have a great reputation, um, and they're passionate. They really care. Customer service is is number one there. They're just they're just a great great group of people. So in this episode, we talk about a lot. We tell a lot of fish stories. Uh, funny enough, Taylor and Connor actually fished against each other. We've been friends for a while, but fished against each other in several local offshore tournaments. We tell a few stories about that. We talk about their exciting new tackle shop that they're opening up. They've recently put together a 4,000 square foot offshore and inshore tackle shop fully loaded with everything needed from canyon fishing to striped bass fishing. It really is going to be a, a game changer in terms of, you know, availability of that type of stuff for fishermen, anglers, boaters throughout the entire South Shore, Massachusetts and beyond. So this is a great episode. We really enjoyed talking with these guys and um, we're excited to be partnered with a great local business. So without further ado, here is the crew from Monahan's Marine. Welcome to the Sea Bros Fishing Podcast, where we follow three words of wisdom. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. Oh, Boys, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think those are nervous butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to feel so good once that April 6th date comes. Like, you're going to have sweaty pits. It's going to be nerve wracking. Yes. So what are, what are, let's go over the, the timeline, I guess, to start. We can go backwards. So you guys are, we're doing an April 6th. Yeah, April 6th grand opening. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a zoo in here. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of different vendors coming. Um, obviously the grand opening of Fish and Tackle, but we also do our open house that day too. Um, so that's something we do yearly um, down in the store and then boat motor trailers. So it's going to be crazy. We have a lot of seminars going on. Um, Ryan from My Fishing Cape Cod will be here. Yep. We'll be doing a seminar. When it comes, um, uh, Bill Hurley, right? Yep. Um, and then there's, when it comes to vendors, we got like Zach's Customs uh, coming. We got Sh Shimano, um, Jack Sprangle from Shimano will be here. Um, Fred from Penn will be here. We got all the big vendors yeah. coming. Yeah, so it'll be good. We'll have a bunch of food. Get comfy. Don't like give the mic a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> George cut that one line out. Yeah, <laughs> George knows what they got. Yeah, <laughs> I feel bad for George. He's gonna listen to all this. That honestly, the way you guys are sitting should be fine. Like if you're in, on a cut, like, on a cut kitty corner, if Brian's on a roll or you're on a roll. Just kind of like slowly okay. tilt the mic over to yourself so you're making sure you're getting your audio. But it all sounds pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, we're excited. I mean, this kind of all started with just like an idea. Um, 
obviously when Mark and Brian bought the place, they kind of were looking at untapped areas. Um, obviously, we've had a tackle shop since. Forever. Yeah. Like, it started up here. Yeah. It yeah. started in the back corner over there. Um, That's cool. Then it moved downstairs, and then, uh, you know, it sales, you know, it, gets, it never really had a home. So I always, first thing I did when I came up here and I looked around, I'm like, geez, look at this unused space up here. Super smart. Yeah. Super so. smart. I think the, the fact that you guys can provide the whole outfitting sure. experience for everybody is a game changer. The fact that you have boat sales, engine right. sales, you're one of the leading parts distributors and retailers in the Northeast for everything that you sell um, and beyond that. Shift your body um, this way so you're on the camera. Better. And then you're gonna have a 4,000 square foot offshore and inshore tackle shop. It's been a lot of yeah, arguments it's, about it's that. debate on that. I actually think it's bigger than that, but we haven't <laughs> had the chance to really map it out. So it's, it's funny, we had like, I don't know, like four vendors come through um, and they all gave us different square footage on oh, right. up here. Yeah. Um, so we don't know who's actually being honest. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely bigger than 4,000 square feet. Um, but yeah, to your point, I mean, being able to come in and grab bottom paint or a bilge pump or a battery or whatever, yeah. um, you know, go over, talk to Ronnie in service or whatever it might be, and then be able to come up here and get your tackle stuff is it's pretty cool. It is. It's huge. I don't think there's another place like it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's another place like it in our area, especially. No. And I mean, Monahan's has been a staple in this area since 1961. 61, yeah. yeah. Almost 65, come up on 65 years. It's, it's a funny. long time. Our grandfather was actually a mechanic here. No way, I didn't know day. that. Yeah. yeah, he did a lot of the IO work, a lot of like Merc Cruiser stuff and- Is that what uh, OG was talking about yeah. when he was over there? So okay. he was a mechanic at, he was a mechanic at Janelle Ford. And then he was also a mechanic here, kind of bounced back and forth and, you know, had boats growing up. So this place has always been kind of our you know, parts and, and boat store as well. Right. Um, I don't think I've ever come here and not got what I needed. Right. To be honest. Yeah. Like, even like stupid little stuff. I mean, doing all the engine maintenance and all that ourselves, just like little adapters, you know, gear oil adapters, just little, little shit. You walk in here and it's, it's here, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. We always joke around. Uh, Peter's got like uh, Peter's back room. You go in that back room. If we could, if we could somehow have people walk through there and walk around, it's like a museum. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah. A and like a lot back there. We could walk back there and we wouldn't find anything. <laughs> but you could ask him for something and he'll find. I'm getting a pretty seconds. good hang of what's. Yeah. Back there. <laughs> but I will say, there's a lot of times where somebody walks in the door and they're looking for a specific part, and you look at it and it, you're like, I, I have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. And Peter walks by, you grab him, and all of a sudden he runs out back. And might sometimes it might take him five, seven, mm -hmm. eight minutes, but you'll hear him yell, <laughs> I found it! Yeah. I found it out yeah. back. Yeah. And he, yeah. sure enough, he comes and makes somebody's day. It happens probably two or three times a day a when day. we're busy. Yeah, That's a day. funny. Yeah. yeah. That's so people are like, they're, they're honestly shocked. They came here because they knew that's the best chance of finding what they were looking for. But when they when they actually realize we had it, it blows them away, yeah. you know. And it happens. It does happen probably two, three times a day when we're busy, you know, mm. spring and fall. And I'd say like ninety percent of the time too. If he doesn't have it, he will find it. Right. Like if it's here, it's you know it's one thing. But if he, it's not here, he's gonna go out and he's gonna look for it. Like he's calling people. He's constantly trying to find things. Right. How much? How many of? Uh, so I guess let's back up. So maybe talk a little bit about you and Mark's relationship sure. and that partnership and Situa Boatworks and then yeah. evolving into Monahan's and sure. how that whole yeah, business so, relationship mean, it's, started. It's, my boating lifestyle started here too. I grew up down the street. So I'd be coming in here, you know, 10 years, 12 years old, getting brown bottom paint, going down the street and painting my grandfather's boat. So I, that's my introduction into boating was through my grandfather and through my, my dad. Mm -hmm. He was, um, you know, they're all big, a lot of Coast Guard in my family. That's cool. Hmm. So, um, so we, boating background was there. Mark grew up in Situate, you know, uh, some time in Connecticut, but you no, know, you know, his main time in, in Situate and Braintree. And, uh, you know, he went to school, went to Wentworth, went down to spring break one year for Lauderdale. 
never really came back. Spring so break he, this week, too, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he went down there, and that's where he started, you know, MPI. Uh, that was our business out of Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale. And that was more like, uh, you know, that was a management company. You don't really see it up here. So it's boats 30 to 70 feet who, you know, they live in New York. They live in Chicago. They live in Boston. They just fly in, and they want their boat in the Bahamas. They want their boat cooler stocked with ice. You know, they want to go out and have a good time. And... You know, so we would basically manage their boats. We were kind of mini captains on, you know, a bunch of boats. And that's how it started. And, you know, I went to, went to Weymouth High when I graduated UMass and went down, um, you know, started my career. I was not in boating. And he had just called me out of the blue one October and said, hey, you know, I got to take a boat from Boston back down to Fort Lauderdale. Want to go? I said, okay you know no problem i've never done sure. it before he had done it a bunch you know i didn't know what i was getting into um 56 foot Sierra we took from yard haven down to fort lauderdale and the trip was great great weather probably helped we had some decent weather and then you know i remember um you know coming into port everglades sun setting turns to me he goes what do you think? Want to move town? <laughs> I said, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Called my girlfriend, who's my wife at the time. Do you want to move down? And that's how that started. So we worked down there for together for um, quite some time, just kind of building that business. Call it, you know, absentee owner, concierge. You know, we, but we did everything. Or we made sure it got done. And um, the kind of what had happened, opposite season. So then in, you know, every, you know, October was great. Yeah. And then May it wasn't. All the boats left. So we just kept seeing this transition of people going away, and they, they'd come back the next, you know, September, October, and, you know, they wouldn't be in good shape, you know, because yeah. there was no one up here who could continue it. So that's where I volunteered. I said, hey, I'll, I'll come back up. I'll snowbird. So I snowbird for five years every april to september in boston and every you know september to april down in uh that doesn't suck no it did not, <laughs> it did not. <laughs> you know it did not it always awesome. would start i'd come in and the first thing i go to was opening day you know and that's how my season would start but so we built it up here we had our base you know we were in you know marina bay we were down in down in falmouth we were up on the north shore we were in boston so we had we had a core that we could take care of um, and then I would build it. I'd pick up a couple boats. I'd pick up a couple boats. And then that got to a point where, you know, Mark and I were like, geez, you know, we can, let's do something here. And that's mm. where Situate started. So gotcha. we found out that Situate was, you know, putting out to bid someone to come and operate, you know, the Marine Park. And um, I just went full steam on that and put a proposal together. It was months getting that together. And, you know, we won the bid. And, you know, I still remember Heritage. Uh, now what? <laughs> Heritage days, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, we were down in Situate Harbor, and we're trying to sign people up for storage. And the travel lift wasn't there yet. Yeah. So, you know, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be there. It'll yeah. go that worry, it'll be we'll there. We'll figure so, it out. Yeah, so uh, that September, the travel lift uh, showed up, and, you know, we started cranking there. And then I was obviously full-time up here. Mm. Mark was full-time down, down in Florida. Yeah, how'd that work? How do you get to stay down there and you're up here? Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, he did kind of win that battle. It was great down there. I mean, the weather is just, I mean, the boating down there. Yeah. Is... I would imagine I would imagine coming into it. I mean, you've been boating your whole life, but coming into like the business kind of fresh with Mark and seeing how it evolved, yeah. being that you were spent so much time in Florida off the bat. Yeah. The the amount of stuff you learn must have been exponential well, it's, being down it's there. It's year round. I mean, yeah. it's every it, there's no slow time. It's, you know, it's yep. uh you know, it does get the weather, you know, you've got weather changes. So, you know, as far as, you know, in the summer, yeah, it's it's a lot better boating down there. But it's, you know, 98 degrees, you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. so um, but it's constant and yeah, just you're never taking any time off. Like like up here, we have a slow season. I feel like we always. Yeah. Whether you're fishing, working on boats, like when you're not busy, you lose a little bit. You know, yeah. when, when you're bu sure. when you're busy, you're constantly improving on sure. your craft, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, but down there, like you were saying, you can get really knowledgeable and you can just know what you're talking about in regards to boats or fishing really quickly because it's year round. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It seems like technology down there. It's like 10 years 
in front of us. Yeah. You know, like just look at trolling motors. Mm. Like every boat, and like you go to Florida, every single center console pretty much that's less than thirty something feet has one. And now they have them on like forty footers. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Sorry. And big now premium everybody up here is getting into it. I mean, it's yeah. just you could just see it coming. Like the next ten years, every center con- console is going to have a have a trolling motor. I just saw a video of a front runner uh, cat with two. That's yeah, it. No, it was go. that guy Daniel Ty. Yeah, he's got the new. I think it's a thirty-seven cat. Two. I, I. I don't know if they're Minkotas or Rodans, but they're. He's got two of them, and the boat just does not move. It's right. crazy. You know, it could be in yeah. twenty knot wind, and the things. It's like it's yeah. anchored. The technology know? advantage, yeah. Yeah. or even like dark yeah. mate. I mean, we're starting to see that yeah. push up here now. Yeah. Do- what is it? Dark, dark mate. mate. Yeah, that's that's down the road in the history of Mark and I. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's a wireless a wireless uh, control of your boat. So if you have outboards you know stern drive pods you got a little little remote control you can dock your boat uh ties Easy. ties into the system literally you guys, don't you know yeah. you guys know bob higgins right yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. had it does on, he on yeah. Necessity. Yeah. yeah okay so now we are starting to see it now in sport fish you know so now the captain doesn't have to be at the helm turn right. backwards he's just standing up on the bridge or down the cockpit backing down on a boat that's right. insane yeah you control the full the full throttle thrusters control. Everything. everything yeah it's insane yeah that's so, cat's partially scary. We're gonna we'll, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna we'll circle back on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> time down in Florida, came up here, came up won here. the bid. Yeah. Centro Boat Works. What, what year did yeah. Centro Boat Works start? So that was uh, when was that? Two thousand eight, right? Two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Gotcha. So um, right got, in recession. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. Um, but I find boating like, and that's that was part of what we talked about, you know, when we were doing this. Like, you're crazy. What are you doing? It's the you know the Great Recession. Or, you know, every, right. everything's down. I go, boating is not no. an option. No, mm-hmm. it's a way of life. Yeah, people exactly. will spend their last it's paycheck. It's a way to of life. They'll, they'll sell their house before they sell <laughs> their boat. It's Literally. a distraction from all that other right. stuff. You know, right? Yeah, exactly. Get get away. You know, and that's that's just you know. People wait for the docks to open to come down and socialize, mm-hmm. yep. you know? Yes. Arguably, you could argue that when things get tough, the industry actually sees an uptick. We've seen is similar with the charters, too. Yeah. You know, people want to get away from it all. They want to just let their minds be free and just... Right. That might have yeah. something yeah. to do with the government just handing out, like, 1400 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah I'm not sure that's going to always happen <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so oh nine. Yeah. yeah, so we started, you know, um, filled up the yard. You know, at least we thought we were full because now we've almost doubled that. Right. Uh, just getting more efficient in, in how we do that. But so that was always good. You know, we, uh, you know, just slowly kind of just took on what, what you can handle. You know, our thing is always, you know, service. Yeah. Got to be, you know, it doesn't matter how many boats you can sell. It doesn't matter how many how many engines you can sell. You gotta be able to service them in the end, Um, you know, so. Were uh, you and Mark doing a lot of the service yourself? I'm assuming it was like Uh, a small, nimble crew and then slowly we're at it. It was, it was, yeah, it was like Mark, it was like three of us. That's how it started. And then it grew and then, you know, then you're hiring, you know, someone to go wash the boats and then you're hiring someone to go dive on the boats. And then, you know, you're doing the electronics and salts Then they're getting too big and you're, and that's just how we just grew. Mm-hmm. You just kind of. Isn't that your wallpaper on your computer downstairs? I was downstairs? just going to say, if you look at the parts <laughs> computer downstairs. It's Brian working on a boat. The wallpaper yeah. is Brian, like, covered in sweat yeah. at Citro Boat Works, yeah. work, well, working on a, I don't know, C-Ray or something like that. That's what you have to do. Yeah. yeah. And, you, you know, Owner not, life's easy. Yeah. No. You know, right. Getting right. into the mud. Yeah. yeah. That's our, honestly, I don't want to say a good segue, but, I mean, Brian's been on his hands and knees, covered in sweat in here, yeah. getting yeah. this store ready to go. That's so the is. mentality is mm-hmm. still there. For All sure. hands on deck. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a huge advantage for you guys, just having the back the service background and af- actually doing the work too. Well, you have an understanding of right. what people are, are you know dealing. how important it is. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of businesses they go hard into the sales and then forget about the services second. No, service. And I is think one. I think service is one. Right. You know, to make it successful. Mm-hmm. And service is everything, even down the store, like servicing, yeah. even up here servicing mm-hmm. people are coming in they, they don't know you know they might walk in upstairs into this into the new fishing department and look and talk the game oh i know what i'm doing but you got to talk to them they really are just asking for help yeah and that's where you guys are going to come in and, mm-hmm. and help them out with that yeah. so that's service you right. know yep 
and everybody asks for help differently. You sure. Know? Sometimes they're not actually saying it out loud, but you know deep down they need a little bit of help, and you kind of have to do it in a way that makes isn't them pushy, feel. makes them feel like it's almost maybe their not idea. They, their idea. Yeah. And sometimes I see it's, that every day. Sometimes <laughs> you get the Ron Swanson in the shop. Right. I know more than you. I know more than you. Yeah. But then you, you quickly you are able to kind of pick that apart in a, in a polite way. Yeah, it's just right. listening. Steer them in the yeah. right direction. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, and every aspect of what we do here, if it's, you know, in the store, can be, it's intim- it could be intimidating to some people. Mm-hmm. You know, so you gotta you gotta For walk. Sure. You gotta walk. I mean, like, through. I mean, just us coming in here and shooting the breeze about tackle. I mean, you know, ins and outs of service and engine work and boats. But you're relatively fresh to the offshore tackle game. Oh, yeah. You know, you have a couple guys that are very experienced. The yeah. offshore tackle game. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't let but it's don't a, be confused. This guy can tie fly. Oh, 100. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was strategic We're not in that. In that <laughs> yeah. That'll be the next episode. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It is yeah. a lot. Ask sure. him about Whatever. matching the hatch. He'll go. go uh, down so we got a fellow feather merchant. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I love it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, so sit, yeah, sit your boat works on yeah so sit so so situate yeah so we just grew that you know and that was do a little more do a little more offer another service you know and now now we're totally filled over there waiting list uh for storage um such a cool spot too in situate harbor oh yeah Connor and i was just talking about that it's always so tidy there yeah. i mean i'm a i'm super ocd and uh from the moment we bought the center console to, you know, you guys diagnosing a few issues, walking into that shop and that yard, it is so neat and tidy. And there's not a lot of space, but you you guys manage your space. Yeah, and and, and it's it's a job to manage that space, you Mm. know, to know when when boats are going in and when, you know, because you got, once again, you service here, you got, you know, although some people want to go in super early, and I, I think it's a little colder now to go in so early, but they want to go in early, and that's a week or that's some, yeah. some so you got to hit their launch deadlines, and that's everything. You guys should see the calendar that he has yeah. for Situate Boatworks. <laughs> it is insane. I'm like, sure. It looks like a mad scientist, like, <laughs> drumming stuff. It works. Stuff. Yeah. It works. And yeah. to that point, you almost yeah. have to be tidy. Yeah. yeah. Like an operation as big as it with the, mm. the space as limited as it is, you you have to be tidy. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, the yeah. guys over there, they they do they a great it. job. Great job. Um so so as we as we grew, we ran out of space, you know. Um so we were kind of at a spot where, okay, well we can't fit any more boats. We have the technicians to support it, but we don't have any more space. So that's when Mark and I started to look for well, what are we going to do now? Let's see if we can find some a yard inland or, or something. So we invested in a you know a nice truck, a nice yard trailer. We were all ready to go to find something you know in Pembroke or somewhere down the road. And right. and then through the grapevine, you know, we kind of heard about here. Mm-hmm. So we were like, wow, okay, there's a lot of land there to store boats. Yeah. But there's a whole business here, too. So, you know, Wally and Nancy, you know, we started talking and, um, you know, number one, we did not want this place to go away. Yeah. Like, it couldn't. Like, this goes away. If this if this wasn't here, like, there's a lot of people, number one, who work here that right. depend on it. But number two, that count on this place yeah, for it's a staple for, in the boating community, it is. especially in the South Shore. Right. So it turned into like, well, we, we need to do something here, and that's that was a year, you know, a year ago, year and a half ago now, um, that we just started putting. Here we go again, putting our heads together, you know, trying to get something done uh, together, and uh, yeah, we we got it done. So it was great. We wouldn't have done it if we couldn't keep everyone here. Yeah, that was super important to us. It's huge, and everyone everyone did stay. So, um, this place has such a good name for itself. Oh, yeah. yeah, from Absolutely. you know, as far back as I can remember, I've never heard a bad thing about this place. Yeah, which mm-hmm. you think like I feel like almost every shop you might hear a little drama factor here and there. I I've never heard anything. Mm. So I think if you you know continuing with you guys, I think it's gonna be perfect. It's a great. To put it in perspective, 
Ronnie, our service manager, has worked here longer than I've been alive. That's crazy. Truly. 1975. He started here in high school. That's awesome. And he so is, the he, knowledge yeah. that is here yeah. is unbelievable. That's irreplaceable. Yeah. He's a master Yamaha tech. He can literally work on a Yamaha engine blindfolded. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. That's awesome. And he like everybody here, but probably almost to the next level, like, he puts he puts the customer first. And I know that's cliche, but uh, it's it's from the top down in service over here from Brian, everywhere. It's like, and I think that goes to your point, Taylor, about you haven't heard like a negative thing about Monahan's, mm, and that's yeah. just because I think since 1961, right, right. we've been putting the customer for your in your service forward, would be it. Right. servicing engines or right. servicing your client yeah you know you don't come in here and get that kind of dismissive you know we're kind of too busy to handle this you know minor issue right um you know you help everybody yeah we'd rather great. drop what we're doing especially if it's something like for us internally we'd rather drop what we're doing and and help a customer yeah right mm-hmm. i yeah. mean a good example of that is literally in the heart <laughs> the craziest time of year for us the fall hauling boats left and right Ronnie, the service manager, who doesn't need to do this at all, hopped in the hydraulic trailer and brought a boat down to uh, Rhode Island for a customer. Like wow. the guy needed the yard that he was storing it in needed the boat in there that day, and rather than Ronnie being like, "Oh, someone else do it," or grab a kid out of the yard, right. he's like, "I'll do it. I'll, I'll run it down there." You know, it took two hours out of his day. I'm sure he's got a lot of other things to be doing. Right. Um, but you know, hauled the boat down there in his own time, and you know, took care of the customer. So he's always doing that. He leads from the front. You know, he sets an example for everybody else that works under him. And really, I mean, it makes everybody else want to work that much harder when you see sure, totally. you know, right. it's guys like Ronnie and Brian. Like, yeah. literally, Connor's not kidding. Like, Brian has been here arguably longer than us at night. It's awesome. Putting stuff up. Every, and, every, like, yeah. every night we stay late, he stays later. So. I'm convinced he's got a cot out back or something. It's just. <laughs> I, I haven't used the shower yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a shower in his it, office. It's still unused. I but. feel like that's what it takes, though. I mean, you're not a small business by any means, right. but local business, you know, owner operated. You're not hiring out a bunch of senior leaders to run the company right. or anything. It's that's what it takes. Um, I mean, we're in the same. I feel like we follow the same mantra yeah. with our business. You know? I mean, you guys have been, how long is uh, Mass Bay? It's our 26th year in business. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we started, our father started Mass Bay Guides in 99, and we couldn't afford a boat at that time. So right. he was basically, you know, he'd been working on charter boats since he was young and been fishing his entire life. And, uh, and, and kind of just learned the whole google side of things and helped his buddies build their charter businesses up and then when it came time and we were able to afford our first boat our first charter boat you know he pulled the trigger in 99 and um what was the first rig a 32 holland it was a harpoon boat where did we where did, was it a north shore we, boat we actually bought that in like 2004 yeah because we had the grady before that yeah and then we had the no, we had the Holland in two thousand and uh, that's a two thousand two Hall two thousand and three, because I graduated. No, you're right, two thousand four. You're yeah. right. Yeah, um, two years old or three years old. It was yeah. the Hustler two, is what it was called. Harpoon boat, <laughs> out of. Uh, Actually, I think you're wrong there. Hustler. Oh no, that was it. Was Salt Pro was the Donnell. The Donnell was right. Salt like Pro. Yeah. For yeah, it was called the yeah. Hustler <laughs> two, and it was out of I believe Maine, right? But it was it was docked. In like like Southern Maine, I believe. Yeah, Southern Maine or New Hampshire that or something. Boat was we sick. bought it. I love that boat. It had a thirty-one twenty-six Caterpillar in it, and that thing trolled tuna like it was a very very sneaky boat. That's how we cut our teeth was that boat when trolling those school yeah. school tuna fish. That's what like exponentially shot our business up right off the rip. Um, and that was that was our dad's focus, really. Even when he was working on the other boats, you know, it was we had cod fishing still at the time, and it was a lot of like multi-species trips and combo trips. And then as soon as we got that first wave of small fish in, back in you know early two thousands, he just tried like two thousand six, yeah, say two thousand five. Tried to capitalize on that, you know, and it 
it was a huge risk. Was that in Citroën too? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were, uh, we've historically had it, you know, at Hummer Rock in the off season, um, on the hard. And then we've always been at the Mill Wharf, but, um, now we're going to be pre and mm. post season over yeah. at Citroën Boatworks. So that's yeah. going to yeah. be nice. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like, but back to the whole local business thing. I mean, that's what it takes, you know, leading from the front. And what's awesome about here, and you can just sense it, and, you know, we've been poking our head in and out of here, you know, quite often in the last few weeks. You sense the leadership in everybody, which is great. You know, you can kind of let people roll with what their expertise is, and you're not having to micromanage, and you know, it seems like Brian trusts you guys and, you know, lets you roll, and you've been doing a great job with everything that we've seen. I mean, and we know how stressful yeah. it is. Yeah, we've, <laughs> we've There's definitely been, been a couple this. conversations where we're like, hey, uh, so we just <laughs> yeah. put this order in. and uh, Yeah. Brian's You're going like, to have Is this those. a $10,000 conversation or is this a $25,000 conversation? Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might need to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Grab a water. Uh, but this, like, even that, like, leaning in and, like, this was, like, started as, like, just a conversation. Like, mm. I came in here and I had these crazy ideas and I was like, all right, these guys are either going to love me or think I'm out of my mind. And we literally sat in my interview and I'm like, dude, we can really scale this thing. Like we have an opportunity here to blow things up. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, how cool is that to come in and like have these ideas and, you know, throw it all out there and be like, well, I have nothing to lose. Like, whatever, let's see if this works and have Mark and Brian be like, all right, let's do it. Like, I don't think there's one thing that we talked about that we haven't been like full steam ahead on probably besides yeah, yeah besides buying like an h and h or like something crazy <laughs> like that. Yeah, i'm sure he's right, pumped right. the brakes on you yeah yeah like yeah so what if we just go buy a big down east pretty sweet yeah. yeah yeah um but like and then we started having conversations around it and then we we're like all right like let's see and in my head i'm like is this guy serious or is he just trying to keep me happy like and here we look are. Around. Yeah, yeah, now look around. Like, yeah, yeah. how serious was he? You know what I mean? But that's what it takes in this day and age. I mean, things are evolving so fast with how, you know, marketing works. Yeah. I mean, as you know, I mean, you have more yeah. experience than than we do. We've just kind of like had to do it right uh, along the way and kind of self taught along the way. But if you don't stay ahead of it and do what you're doing and what you've suggested, you know, you got to be at the you got to be at the front end of right. that. You got to be ahead of the game by a step. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind and just stay stagnant. Right. Yeah, you can't slow down. No. You have to keep moving. Especially in a gold rush seasonal boating industry. I was just laughing at that mixed with his point earlier when he said it's busy seasons the fall. I said, well, you're going to, thinking to myself, you're going to have a new busy season. You <laughs> yeah. just don't know it yet. Right. Yeah. 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 Your, your spring, like this time of year, next year on is going to be crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. With this whole with this whole facility upstairs. Well, it's know? kind of funny, too, because when I first started here, we were talking about, like, downtime. Like, oh, yeah, and, like, the winter, it gets a little slow. Yeah. Like, man, we've been super fortunate. Like, we've been doing some different things, to your point, on the marketing side. Um, the guys on the sales team have been absolutely killing it. Um, and we've been truly full steam ahead yeah. all year. Like, yeah, I mean, and Brian keeps telling me, like, hey, the spring's going to get crazy. Like, it's going to get crazy around yeah. here. And I'm like, all right. We literally had, like, an off-the-record conversation the other day. He's like, you good? Like, yeah. Ready for this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Like, let's go. Yeah, let's put the great. point down. Yeah. It used to be to a degree where you know we would shut down. Monians yeah. would shut down. They'd open back up February 1st, and I don't see how we could do that. I mean, no. granted, the last two see the last two Februarys we've had projects to do, but I mean that's a good thing. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah but we're also keeping the service guys busy all right. winter. Right. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. Inside like, work and, and right. So, like, yeah. There's no time to shut down anymore. There's, mm. There really isn't. Yeah. I think that's a massive advantage you have, too, the outfitting side of things. You guys were impressed when we went walking in the yard the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you no idea there's so that much, much space. space is back there. But yeah. just, like, there's so many guys that, that are either just getting into this or just need work done in general that already may have the boat, have the mm -hmm. engine, have the gear, but they need all new rod holders put in. Right. Yeah. Or they need uh, some electronics with, oh, you know, Need, need custom rods mm. or whatever like they're going to be coming in and out of here and have the ability to do anything yeah mm. guys repowering you know. boats that are now getting into it yeah guys that are buying new boats that are you know are getting into it because they want to either tuna fish or striper fish or whatever mm. right and just don't know how i mean it's a one-stop shop 
Yeah, and the cool thing too is like that's people, the goal, anyways. Like, we do this every day. Like you know, I'm on the water when I'm not here we're with the family. I'm on the water. Like that's just how I am. Like I'm fishing. I'm on the boat. Like you know, we're doing this stuff. Like you guys are on. You know, Mark's. This kid's crazy. I mean, Chasing he's the surf bite. Yeah. Out. <laughs> Mark, yeah, Mark's a silent killer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Mark, Try to get his spots out of him. It's, Mark uh, will be chasing sharks and stripers from the beach all night, and then be at work at eight thirty in the morning, mm-hmm. crank he, through the day, and then go back and do it the next. Oh, night. dude, it's five does, nights does a week. Does he seem know? tired or not? <laughs> no. Nah. Sometimes. He's got his we chair. We kind of know if, he, if he's, <laughs> he's got, got his chair. previous night. Was it a good night of fishing or uh, a bad night? Oh, no, you know when it's a good night. Yeah. You know? okay. all, he comes in all zipped up. All yeah. Good, yeah, when you come in, you know. Oh, that's awesome. But it was funny. We were doing the – Mark's very protective of his spots, <laughs> as most fishermen. But I was asking him. We, we did our website, and I was asking Mark for some shots. I'm like, hello, give me some, you know, some pictures of you fishing. And he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, I don't want people knowing my spots. Trying I'm like, to black out. You were yeah, really in you know, the night. Scribbled yeah. out all the background. <laughs> scribbling out all the, all the like, <laughs> any landmark. That I know that like, lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. You can't see that little house right there. You <laughs> know, he's fishing from shore. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. It is tricky. He's like know? photoshopping the windmill from the gut, like in the back <laughs> yeah, of his yeah, photos. Yeah. The thing is, it's like shore fishing, as everybody knows. Like the current does the same thing. Right over and over and over and over again the fish hold in the same places a lot over and over again so if like you have a little a little secret honey hole right minute like yeah. 10 guys know about it it gets tricky i would imagine i'm not like a big oh, no, shore guy it does but i could totally see that happening yeah and you yeah. can't just go find like a similar spot because you're not on a boat right, right. like your, your feet are on solid ground yeah right. it's a lot harder to go and change your spot yep. yeah we, we have an air tag in his t- tackle box. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. I even take different vehicles at night, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, what do you drive? And I'm like, oh, I got to start taking different cars, you know? Or, he changes his shoe size. Know? People, yeah, people are tracking you through the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Been, like, down the Cape before, and people are like, oh, you know, hey, you work at Monaghan's? And I was like, you know, it's cool you're known down there, but at the same time, it's like, damn, now they're, you know, they're finding oh, yeah. all the spots. It's, you know, it's like being on a boat, you know? Oh, there's Mass Bay Guides, you know, let's follow them around. It's, right, yeah. It's cool, but at the same time, it kind of, well, they go my spots. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, you have to be, there's this fine balance. I mean, we're all, we obviously love sharing information. I mean, we're doing this podcast. Right. right. Um, and we've found, we actually had this conversation before we came here. We almost found it, find it more helpful for us to share information because it keeps people at bay. Like it makes them more respectful of your space and, you know, understanding that, yeah, I'm here, but it doesn't mean that's the only place the fish are, you know, and making that a kind of a transparent thing. Like we're here cause we're here every day, but there's plenty of other spots to go to. We've found it's actually helped us over time from getting crowded out by sharing information. It was definitely a period of time that was pretty bad. Yeah. People are just like looking for, yeah. Cause they didn't really know us. I think it was before the podcast. Right. You know, they, well, now they, you're, like, teaching people not only, like, not where the spot is, but why are the fish in that spot. Yeah. So and then they can go and yeah. use their brain and say, right. okay, well, if the fish are there, I got a similar setup here. Yes. Right? So why, why wouldn't the fish be here? Totally. Right? Totally. So, yeah. Which is so much more rewarding. Yeah, yeah. And then it's the whole, like, you're, you're not giving people fish. You're teaching them how to fish. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And, um, yeah. It's more rewarding and it spread things, spreads things out. Yeah. Right? Yep. I mean, yeah, that's always the case. Like, you know, last last season we really didn't have it that much, but the pogey bite in Boston Harbor. Um, but, like, when you see the fleet of boats, like, it's just – it's such a headache. I'd rather just go do my own thing, find the fish, and when you get on them, it's that much more rewarding. Like, yeah. Kind of create your own fishing report. Use your own knowledge. Kind of be out there. Get a pulse on it. That's really what it comes down to is just being out there and having a pulse on things. Yeah. Building the instincts. That's the hardest yeah. part. That's definitely the hardest part. And if you're not out there a lot, you, right. know, the you know, it takes you 30 years to build those those fine-tuned instincts as opposed to five years of fishing 50 to 100 days a year. Um, and they truly are instincts. It's not, it, to me anyway, maybe you guys are starting to pick them apart more to feel like it's a feeling and you know what, you're starting to see things that are like, okay, I, now I'm starting to realize why I think this spot is yes. good. For me, it's like truly instinctual where like, I don't even know why I feel like this spot is good, but there's, there's things going on around me and it's like, 
it's it, it, it's a gut feeling. Oh, it is. Yes. I had like a spiritual moment this season on the water. This sounds, it sounds personal. Like, yeah. yeah. No, it yeah. Sounds like you should. It sounds like you should no, whisper I had, it. Uh, so I've been trying to get my sister's boyfriend to come fishing with me. He never really he did some like freshwater fishing, but he never come. I was, you know, showing him pictures, top water bass, like 40, 45 inch fish, and I'm like, you gotta come out with me. And he's like, dude, you are out of your mind, like going fishing at 3:50 in the morning. So I convinced him, I'm like, you gotta come out with me. And the bite was up off Nahant, and I was, that was the game plan I left the dock with. And I'm out, I'm out by Bee Boogie grabbing some mackerel, and I started heading up that way, and then I just had this like, eh, it just doesn't feel right. Like, I just, I was like, eh. Yeah. So I put the bow east, I started heading towards mine it, and uh, sure enough, start seeing the birds working the top. And I'm like, all right, I got him on the bow. He's never cast a rod in his life. <laughs> and I think I had like a dock on it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to put you right on him. Like, you know, like just throw it out there. And he goes to make a cast and it just bird nests. And I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, all right, I got it. So I just threw it out there for him, hooked him up, caught his first fish. It was like a 45 inch bass. Like, but it was instinct. It was like, yeah. it just doesn't feel right going yeah. this way. Like, I'm being pulled this way. Yeah. So it really is. I mean, it's just having a pulse on things. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you hear you're anchored up on the bank and you hear that there's a, a good bite either north or south of you. <clears throat> but things are starting to trend in the right direction where you are. And all of a sudden, all the boats start piling, you know, picking up and leaving, going the direction that you're hearing the bite is. But that bite might be moving in your direction. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's been big for me is like, like using Don't the gun in, instinct to stay put. You yeah. know, and then all of a sudden it pays off like two, three, four times, you know, out of like six or seven trips. And you're like, OK, I'm starting to I'm starting to feel it. I don't really know what it is, but I'm feeling it. You yes. know, could feel it in my loins, <laughs> <laughs> in my knee bone. My buddies always joke. We always have like, a, you know, like we start arguing on the boat. Like We should do this. We should do that. No, no, we got to do this. Like we always say, like, you're not a fish. Like, you don't know. You're not a fish. How do you know you're not a fish? That's part of it. Thinking, yeah. like, thinking like one. Think like a fish. How yep. do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of fish, are you guys excited for this whole tackle venture? Are you more excited? Are you more nervous? Are you feeling as like, are you, are you overwhelmed? Overwhelmed? I feel like you're, I feel like I'm an hour into a fight with a bluefin and like giant head shakes. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And okay. I'm like, oh, like, we're, we're like we got, it's, we got the bite. We're there. We're doing everything right. <laughs> But there's like yeah, just giant head shakes, and I'm like, just hold it together, stay, stay in the corner, whatever, yeah. you know. But yeah. yeah, I mean, like I said, we're doing everything right. We've, I mean, we got a, the right people doing the right jobs, which is the most important thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, man, we're so lucky that we got like Mark, his knowledge of like the inshore surf, you know, yeah, everything under the sun that way, and then we've got Connor's experience with the offshore stuff. Now we've got you got like it's just all the stars are aligning. Yep. It's cool for me too, like sitting from like not a back seat, but kind of looking from the outside in from like a sales side of things. Like, <clears throat> you know, we're so busy that we don't give ourselves any credit. Like, again, this all just started with an idea. Like sometimes <laughs> like laying down at night, like just thinking about things, I'm like, we have come so far, like, mm. you know, and this is only the start of time it. to appreciate right, it. Right, exactly. Yeah. We're so Soon busy. we'll be able to sit back. And, and even then, like, we might be building something that we still have no time to sit back and appreciate what we've done. Right. And if that's the case, like, good on us. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so, yeah, I would definitely say excited, a little nervous for my wallet. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Definitely have access to some things, you know, Just like those 130s behind it's you there. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to spend less. Yeah. less having, over having worked in a tackle shop, I think I was, uh, I was Pete Belson's first employee back in the day. No kidding. And, uh, um, second employee. And he was his second employee. Yeah. We spent most of our paycheck yeah. in the, in the in shop. The for yeah. sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah, my wife came up the other day just to visit me and, we came up here, I was showing, and she's like, how do you not buy everything? And I'm like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Just don't check the bed of my truck. Just pick away at it. Pick away at it yeah. all the time. What's been, what's been the most challenging? I know what my most challenging parts were starting a shop, but what have your, been your most? You guys have had a shop. And not, that, just the shop and not just the shop. Most challenging thing with this whole, I'd this, say there's this whole business shiny objects. thus far. Well, when it comes to the shop, <laughs> like what you were saying, we had a shop. Right. That's been a blessing and a curse. Yes. Right? Like that's been, it's been helpful in a lot of ways where we didn't, you know, we had relationships set up with a lot of vendors. We had, uh, and we had a lot of product already. But 
it's also been a curse because it's like trying to we're move we're now moving an, a, a tackle shop from downstairs to upstairs. But like we're we're trying to figure out what to clearance, what to not clearance. I mean, some of that stuff that was down there was hanging up for a long time, right? The store's been open since 1961, right? Yeah. And there's been a tackle shop here since the day we opened. So a lot of that stuff, it, it's just like what what do we bring in that needs to be brand new? What can we now sell because we're building more buzz and building a uh, you know new clientele? There's a lot of that stuff downstairs that probably will sell now, right? Yeah. So like trying to figure out. You know what needs to be brand new what can we still push and and like you know i think when it comes to apparel that's been very difficult because there wasn't a big draw up here now with the new shop coming up here there's going to be a draw so there's a lot of moving parts but i think it's been like i said blessing and a curse mm -hmm. with this store being historically here right yeah it's right. been funny too like yeah. leaning on mark and like obviously he's been doing this a long time and like <laughs> Mark, these things actually sell? And he's like, oh, yeah. He's yeah, like, those yeah. are, like, one of our bigger sellers, man. Like, I'm yeah. like, what? Who buys these things? You look at your SP is, like, staple in, like, the Bass community. Yeah, you know? SP like, Minnows, yeah. Yeah, yeah. SPs, Ronzies, you oh, know, yeah. Hoagie, Paddle Tails, you know, all stuff. Every color needs to be had, you know, because yeah. you don't have it, someone's going to ask. And it's, right. you know, then it's like, you know, touching what Connor said. Setting it up, you already have a lot of the stuff, but now it's like, okay, what did I forget? You know, what do we have to order? Right. Then you think you have everything, and you're like, oh, geez, I forgot this. You know, now you're rushing to order this and, you know, set up. You know, it'll be all good, but it's the process of making sure you have everything. It is. You know? Yeah, that almost made it harder because it's not like we're going to have – we ordered X amount of everything, and, and we're going to have it all perfectly displayed. Like, set, we're still reordering stuff that we had stocked downstairs, right? right? So, like, there's – there's hooks on in aisles where, you know, one's full and the other's not. Now we got to order more to make everything even. But that's all like mundane, easy mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And that's just to get rolling. Right. You know, then then you start dealing with the holes. You know, you get the holes in certain aisles and you're trying to fill the holes and then another hole opens and that part gets a little bit easier. But and tr trying to figure out where and how to display things like. I've moved those wall, those two pieces of slat wall have been, I, mean, I think I spent three full days of Literally. work here just like looking at them, trying, oh, yep. maybe over here, and yep. can yep. I get more bars on that wall to open up this piece of slat wall? And then wall? it'll all change once everyone's right. yeah. in here. And when right. it's, in all reality, right. someone will walk up here and be like, it won't mean anything. It'll be like, where is that? And it's like, oh, it's over there. Yeah, but right. for us, like, we want it to be perfect. Like, we want it to come up. We want it to flow. Like, yeah. it's important for us. You know, we also Connex can't stress too, too much. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to flow all the time. I mean, from our own personal experience at other shops and our own shop in the past, we change things. Yeah, dozens and dozens. You'll, you'll, dozens you'll spend another progress. two weeks, you know, just moving those balls around. Yeah. You know, it's you'll get the best you can. As long as you have the majority of the gear to start, right? You know, like I was saying before, you know, there's certain products that you're just gonna slowly build out over time. It might take two years before you have all the line, you know, the whole line of everything. It's impossible to carry all of it, you know. But and things come up, like some something will get used this season, oh, yeah. some fishery that wasn't used last season, right? And all of a sudden, it'll be the big thing, and you got to have it. What's well, yeah. like flutter spoons last oh, year? Last year oh was, you know, people would call up, you know, flutter spoons, white, I'll buy a dozen, you know, and it was like you couldn't keep them on the shelf. Which, yeah. you know, it's something that's been around a million years, but like. But no one, like, bought them. No one ever bought them. Up here, yeah. it wasn't a big thing. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, historically, they've been used, up, like, mid Atlantic right. for stripers yeah. and stuff, but. Well, like, you know, some here, guy see some guy catch a, a fish with a flutter spoon, yeah. and it's like. I need those. Right. And then it becomes like the hype. And then you know how these little networks work and everyone starts talking about Flutter Spoon. But it's yep. also more than just like a, uh, like a, a mindset of the fishermen. It's the fishery changes, right? right? Like all of a sudden you're, you got a ton of pogies around and right. those Flutter Spoons start working a lot better because they kind of look like pogies, right? Yeah. Or you have a huge bi biomass of small tunas come on the bank and every single one of those bars is off the wall right, in about right, a week. Right, right, right. You know, or they don't show up and, and, they're there. and you're picking away at it all year. Yep. You know, um, you have to be ready for it. I think, go ahead. But, but every, like, I think one of the important parts of talking about this, too, like talking it out is, you know, going back to the beginning part of this conversation is the service side of it. It's like any... At the end of the day, anybody can buy any single one of these things online. Right. You know, but, like, to come in and have the majority of everything they need 
and then have the, the, the service and have like the personalities here and have get a little extra knowledge on top of buying the product, I think is more important than having the product. Right. You know? It's way more important. Yeah, like they, they want to be able to touch and feel it, but they really want to be able to talk to somebody about it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, Everyone we, who comes in it wants to talk to someone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do. Yeah. Even if it's just to tell them about what, what they caught last week. But most of them, they might have a question. You just got to you got to be able to talk to him and, yep. and draw, it that, draw it out. Yeah. Draw it out. I used to out. come in on my lunch break. I used to, yeah, he used to come in all the time and be like, dude, it was a killer morning. Like, you know, look at these pictures. And, you know, he's like, I'm going back out right now. Like, you know, and I'm, hey, good luck. So yeah. I used to work, yeah. uh, I was in tech sales forever and did a lot of working from home. Um, Doesn't sound like you were working. Yeah. From home. <laughs> well, no, it was nice because I could be off the dock at like 435 go out, fish the harbor for a few hours, be back at the dock at, like, 9.30, yep. uh, you know, shower at the marina and then be sitting at my desk by, like, you know, 10. Um, but then I would immediately come here on my lunch break because I, yeah. I needed this, I needed that. Like, I needed to change my game plan for the next morning. Mm-hmm. And I would just chat it up with Mark. And, uh, yeah, that's, like, you know, that used to be, like, one of my favorite things to do on lunch break. Like, Mark would tell me, like, oh, yeah, I heard some guys are down here, like, whatever. Like, But, like, how many people came to the boat show this year? And they were like, oh, we absolutely love talking to Mark. He's you yeah. know, super knowledgeable. Like, you know, he has that relationship with our customers, which is great. I mean, that's what people want. And it goes back to what we're talking about. Like, Well, that's why the captain's corner. That's the whole right. point of setting that up right. where people can just hang out and talk, you know, when they're getting their line done, right. whatever. Yeah. Like, we don't, you know, yes, this is a tackle shop. Yes, this is a marine business. Yes, we sell boats. We sell trailers. We sell engines. Like, yes, all that. Great. But, like, really what we want the space to be is, like, a community, like a place where people come in and they feel welcome and can hang out and network with each other and hey i was out here doing this and you know that didn't work and some other guy says oh try this or that whatever yeah and that's kind of like where the whole partnership with you guys came in like you know if we could tap into that and which we are and you know make you a part of this community and make us a part of your community and bring those two communities together that's where this whole like idea came about yeah um and that's what we want this space to be to your point yes anyone can go on tackle direct or wherever and get everything that we have in the store. But we want it to be somewhere where people, and we see it today, like, you know, it's, it's February, it was freezing cold out. People come in and they just want to talk to Mark. Yeah. You know, they're bored, they want to get away from their old lady for a little bit, grab a coffee and come up here and just chat it up with Mark. Like we see that every day. So oh, it's, it's cool that we have yeah, we've that. Like had to keep people out. Yeah, yeah so it was, we can get people were a little disappointed. That was the biggest challenge. Yeah, when we had yeah. the, when we were working up here and it was a construction zone and, yeah, you know, don't come up here was the first thing. You know, we didn't want people to get hurt. And then right. it turned into you want barricades. Yeah. <laughs> and then they were breaking down the barricades, you know. But uh, it'll all be, I mean, yeah. there will be that little sacrifice in the beginning. It'll all be worth it in yeah. a few weeks when they walk in here and they're like, oh, okay, you know. That's kind of a good thing, too, because I feel like it starts the little buzz. Yeah, it gets the hype going. You know, like, the, hype. Yeah. the people coming in that are having to go through those barricades like you know they're doing some stuff up there you should see this yeah. place you know yeah those are probably the people that we should like like make a note of like yes yeah. that's probably going to be one of our core customers <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah yeah totally <laughs> guy right. just broke down the barricade to see what we're doing i think we should probably <laughs> right. make a note of him yeah all my buddies are like dude come on like what's going on up there what's going on I'm like, oh, you have to wait to find out like yeah. come on man like just give me a little information i think the community thing is uh is super important though i mean i know for me personally not to change topics, but like Mark hunts, I, we just got into it. We could go online and get everything we need, but we want to go to a place where we can bounce ideas off people and learn right. and, so you know, going to what Reedy's go to yeah, Reedy, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like that's, know? and that's kind of what we're trying to build here, but yeah, instead of fishing and boat hunting, it's yeah, it's, you need your boat repowered. You need service work done on your outboard. You need some offshore tackle, right. inshore tackle. Mm. Even just should be, be the first place you think of. Even just to be able to come in and ask the question. Like yeah. someone who's, you know, puts 30 to 50 days in a year and does all their own services on their boats. It's like they can come in here, talk fishing, and then if they have a question on one of their, you know, Yamahas or whatever, you know, how do I, how do I access the VST filter on this? It's like you're not just going to push, we'll bring it in for service. If right. it's someone that seems capable, which – we are, and you guys have done with us at Situa Bowworks in the past. You help us navigate the issue, build confidence, and you want to come back. 
you know? Just oh, yeah. make sure you have like an hour if you ask, yeah, if if, you ask Marty if that, that question. Was, <laughs> yeah. 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 If, that, if that was raised here and you came in, you'd be walked out into the back. You'd either have, you'd be pulling a cowling off a brand new engine or you'd be going to another right. engine yep. and they would show you what needs to be done. Yep. And that's been my experience and yep. personal testimonial. Um, you know, Robo down at Citro Boatworks, he's done that with me many times. Other guys down there had an issue with a uh, uh, fuel pump on the boat last year. I had an issue you with fuel pump. <laughs> so we split, we, I would say we run, I run the little boat like 70 30, and Taylor's, you know, same ratio for Taylor on the big boat versus the little boat. How many times did you have an issue? It was like every time. Out of 10 times, five of them might have something that I'm like, dude. And it was like absolutely just fluke. Like the remote on the, the trolling motor out of batteries, it takes like a watch battery. I'm like, <laughs> all right, now I can't use the trolling motor. Uh, we had, we had uh, the breaker to the trolling motor broke. The yeah. actual, the little switch, the, lever switch the little lever broke. switch broke one day, but it broke in. So you could still we're like... It. No, we couldn't run it. Oh, you couldn't run it. Sorry. It was broke. The, the latch was broken in, so as in the breaker was closed, so the thing should have worked, but none of us could figure it out. <laughs> and then, and you then had the, uh, fuel, pump the issue. fuel pump issue. Which, it, thanks to you guys, was resolved in less, less than half a day. Yeah, for us, it's sweet. like, you know, we're losing thousands business. of dollars uh, yeah. and future business if we have a major issue and we can't get fixed quickly and... I mean, every every time we've done anything with Monahans, it's for the most part, it's been quick. You know, it's well. Now you got those brandy new Yamahas going I'm on the excited. back of the boat. Yeah. You guys gonna be stoked? Yeah, I'm excited for that. It's gonna be a nice upgrade. Yeah. The Seabros Fishing Podcast is now brought to you by Monahans Marine. We recently partnered with Monahans and are excited to be working with a local marine business that has been serving the South Shore of Massachusetts since 1961. For decades, the crew at Monahan has been helping generations of boat owners with outboard parts, boat service, marine equipment, and fishing tackle. Their professionalism and passion for being on the water has made them one of the most reputable boating headquarters in the Northeast. Monahan's is located on Washington Street in Weymouth. They're currently a Jones Brothers and Tidewater Boats retailer and have the most well-stocked inventory of Yamaha outboards, parts, and rigging in mass. The entire staff and crew of technicians have decades of experience. As a recent addition, Monahans has built and rigged out a brand new 4,000 square foot offshore and inshore tackle shop. The grand opening of this new space is set for Saturday, April 6th. They will be fully stocked with everything needed for offshore canyon fishing, nearshore bluefin tuna fishing, striped bass fishing, and more. We are excited to be able to use this space as a new home base to maintain our own tackle and charter fishing fleet, as well as a spot to film some upcoming podcasts and workshops. To learn more about Monahans Marine, the location, boat and engine inventory, or parts, visit www.monahansmarine.com. And then, you know, between the two companies situated in here, there's, there's three master techs. Yeah. That. Which is like unheard of. Go find me another business that has that. Yeah. Three master techs. It is hard, hard to get that certification. It's like a doctorate in Yamahas. Yeah, it's a really? good way it's to hard to it. build redundancy in the marine industry in New England, period, on anything, not just the technical side, you know, the tackle side. Fishing. Fishing. I mean, everything. It's, you know, it's usually like a one man show and they're the expert and right. there's no one to back them up. The fact that you guys have that and you have a mark and you have, you know, everyone else here. That's, yeah, I think uh, that's That'll that's probably huge. be part of our next challenge is if we, you know, if this thing goes the way I think it's going to go, we'll probably need to do a good job of hiring a, a few more people who fit that bill, you know, who are yeah. capable and, you know, customer friendly, happy to help and very knowledgeable as well mm -hmm. yeah so if you're listening and you're a yeah, young, yeah, young exactly. gun hero <laughs> don't be afraid come introduce you yourself walk in here flex, your, flex the muscles matt will be all over you yeah <laughs> <laughs> i left my jacket on uh, <laughs> that's funny um so yeah we're excited about this partnership yeah i think it's gonna be a really good thing for all of us um 
it's gonna be a nice it's gonna be nice to to have a brick and mortar home base for us selfishly as well to be able to come here and cool. also share our stories here and be here when other customers are here and you know just be here to be here to help when we're you know on site right which is we love doing you know yeah i think i mean you know i know a fair bit about bluefin fishing and canyon fishing and just like just a little big a game fair fishing. bit you beat you I don't you. want to talk about this. Right? <laughs> what, the Oak Bluff this, yeah, this is yeah, going to make me sad. That's still, that's still a touchy I mean, talk subject. About things, that <laughs> I have a nightmare once Do every... Do we really want to go into it? <laughs> once once every two and a half nights about that. Hey, I mean, it was I caught the fish on it with a lure that you designed. This, so. yeah. oh, if, if there's any... If there's any uh, the plot <laughs> we don't talk about those lures anymore. <laughs> but you did design it. Yeah, I probably skirted it. it too. Yeah, yeah Probably. I trimmed your skirt. So for those of you who haven't heard the story, <laughs> I mean, we can get this into it. This is basically quick. working on, I was working on Opportunity with the Denison family, and uh, we definitely weren't smoking everybody, but we had a, a substantial lead what was for the your, tournament. What was your catch, roughly? Uh, it was like four whites, a blue. Um, we had like 12 big eyes. Not Obviously didn't kill all of them. Get billfish. Yeah, right? yeah. Blue marlin, Blue marlin are, are billfish or everything. Yeah. And yeah, we had and uh, obviously like as many yellowfin as we needed. We had everything we needed. We didn't have anything huge for tunas. Um, but if you, if if you got a few blue marlin, then that kind of yeah. takes the place. Yeah. You pretty much have to get a blue marlin to be in the top three, unless you're us. Yes. Yeah. Or <laughs> unless you pull off. What so you we kept hearing off. like we were in the lead the entire time, and then. I think the weigh-in closed at five. And you guys are coming in at like four fifty-one, yeah. pretty much. So we were waiting for you guys to come in. Well, we were almost late all because afternoon. we had to stop in Menemsha for ice. Cause right. Yeah. We kept we kept hearing we were like, Tucker was like, it's a five five hundred pounder, and we're like, there's no way. It could have been. It honestly, it sat on the deck of the boat for twenty-four, yeah. hours, almost twenty-four hours. We're just think of how many people have caught. Daytime, nighttime, whatever, 500 pound swordfish in the canyons. How about on the troll? Yeah. And then you get it in the troll During, after visually seeing it. Yeah. We, I mean, I could have stuck the fish if it was legal to stick him. I could have stuck him 10 feet off the side of the boat. It was that close? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, like, I, uh, they're almost like they're drunk during the day. Yeah. So for the listeners, we might as well tell <laughs> yeah. tell this tell my side of the story I wanna, very quickly. I've heard variations of this, but I want to hear how it went down. All right. So essentially... We we also had done went well at that point on big eyes on yellowfin, no I think we might have had one white but n no like substantial billfish points, um, and it's like eleven thirty something like that, and uh, so we're we're marlin fishing. We got one dredge out, um, all your marlin plugs are out. I think we had a Ladonia lady on the short rigger, and I'm halfway up the tower. I was just gonna it was dead calm, so I was just gonna go up there and look around see what I could see. And I get halfway up, and I see the fin, and I was like, Marlin! <laughs> yeah. And then Tucker is like, somehow he gets up the, the tower before I can even, like, finish my thought. Which is impressive for a man of his status. Oh, that guy can move quick when he needs to. <laughs> um, but we get up closer to it, and the thing's, like, barely moving. So we quickly realized that it was a broadbill, and... Like, what do we do? You know, the thing's like almost asleep. So we just decided we're just going to start wrapping the spread around him, see what happens. And shit luck, the second time around, a marlin plug, the Ladonia lady on the short rigger pops out of the water on the way back and it hits him. And he, st up. he started just like ferociously wagging his bill around, trying to hit whatever was there, whatever touched him. Um, I had, at that point, I scurried down the ladder. I had the greenie with Bally who rigged up inside of it. Mm -hmm. Tri I had trimmed the skirt. It was just there. It was ready. It was in the cooler, and I just pulled it out and pitched it out on a Talica 50, and it landed maybe six feet from him. Big splash because it's a heavy lure, and it turned 90 degrees. I watched him engulf it. Um, so absolute amazing. screamer. Like, 35 40 seconds straight just sounding straight down that's crazy i got jimmy riccardi the sword lord yeah. uh, uh, all strapped into the to the belt and that poor poor bastard <laughs> it's like five hours five and right? a half hours wow. we got that fish in the boat at like five full igfa days. tournament yeah 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 i mean we have i have videos of him like three hours in like dying 
and there was still another two and a half hours to go. Uh, we had like the cooler up, up, pushed up against the back of the boat so he could like sit on it because he, his legs are giving out, you know, yeah. and got the fish in the boat at like 5.30 day one. And then he sat, we fished the whole next day. And on our way in, we were almost late because we realized we're like, this fish is de- like decomposing because yeah. it's just so big sticking out one side, both sides of the, of the yep. fish bag for 20 hours. Uh, so we stopped him in that shit to get ice and then screamed over to, uh, to Oak Bluffs to weigh it in. Insane. There was so much hype on that way, and I wasn't yeah. in the tournament. I was no, it, it was, I was like charring. I was pumped, obviously, yeah, yeah, for you guys. But it was I, also you came, no, it you was came like down a, to the boat when we got back. Yeah. You reluctantly patted me on the shoulder, like. Well, I first saw it. I'm like, that can't job. be more than like 300 pounds. And then like, as soon as you started lifting it, I'm like, Jesus. 404, and I mean, I don't know how much a fish can lose in weight sitting on the deck for like a day almost, yeah. packed in ice and in the cooler bag, but still the, the bag's open. I would assume a lot on a sword because they're not a lot of bones. And dropped. I've looked at a lot of pictures since then of like 500 pounders, and I'm like, shit, ours was like thicker. Maybe it, maybe it didn't have the, the length, but it was like a butterball. Yeah. It was like a, it was a massive butterball swordfish. And I was like, this, that's a story. It'll never don't. happen to me again. It'll never, ever happen to me again. It was never know. Like, honestly, it's probably the reason I'm sitting in this seat right now. Yeah. Like, you know, I like cha- completely changed my life. Totally. I was, I, after that tournament, the day after that tournament, I went and started my job in software sales and it was like, terrible at it because all i was doing <laughs> is thinking about swordfish <laughs> yeah. At it. Yeah. yeah yeah i think i fell asleep in my like onboarding meeting because it was like the day the day after i got home from partying my face off after winning the old blood and there is a party at that tournament that's <laughs> yeah. for sure oh yeah we partied it up yeah that's a great event well that's day. awesome i just love that i love that wicked story. awesome yeah i love it <laughs> <Wicked> <laughs> well, that story it's the best story <laughs> Oh, no, it's cool. Uh, That's sweet. I've had things like that happen in my life, and I know Brian has too, and it's just like you'll never forget it. Like that Mako shark I caught was the same thing. Yeah. You know, it was just like life-changing. People still talk about it. People still walk down and situa- you that kid that caught that Mako? I just we always... should put that picture up in here somewhere. Yeah. We should. Be cool. Yeah, that was quite a fish as well. World record male Mako, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't rec- You can't make it a record just because they don't do gender records. they don't do gender records but i believe the largest male caught before your fish was right around 500 by any yep. means of fishing like it's crazy like galvin the, galvin got a jumbo male same like, year yeah that's like literally two weeks after mine yep yep but Speaking of Galvin, that the video of him of the the blue marlin, the canyons, and the lights wasn't that him? Incredible! Like the craziest video of all Incredible. time. I wish I was there. We were, I think we we're only a couple miles from him when that happened, and uh, you could hear his voice on the radio. It, it takes a lot for him to like you know get, get excited. Yeah, He's yeah. seen so much, and uh, that's a wild. This is wild the captain video. Di- Diablo, right? Uh, Diablo. Yeah, El yeah. Diablo. El yeah. Diablo. Yeah. Out of Nantucket and yeah, down saw them, uh, Bahamas. Down Nantucket. Yeah, he's. I mean, they spend a lot of time out there. So yeah, probably the only time he's seen that, though. I would think in the lights, having a blue marlin come by, but maybe not. I don't know. I think it's one of the first times I've ever heard of that from anybody. And it's just like sat there and looked at the boat. It's crazy. Really weird. Um. But yeah, he took you out. (laughs) I was chopped the legs out. Chopped the legs legs out from underneath me. Still won some money and it was fun, but would have won twice as much money. I just love hearing stories like that, though, especially from you guys, because you can. It was like a like just hearing you tell that story right now. Complete light switch. Uh, I, was, I just so, remembered parts of it that I like had forgot. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And that's what's so awesome about this whole thing is everyone wants to tell their story, have it be heard. They enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, and that process for a lot of people starts at a place like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's super. I think you guys are. You're. 1 million percent going in the right direction we're pumped to be on board with it so it's um we're happy to have you that for you know for sure i think uh, it's exciting it's you guys bring this like not that we don't have it because i i mean i'm pretty credible in the space to begin with oh yeah but i'm not like short you guys bring the the brand awareness and the knowledge right and it's almost like a way of opening in this tackle shop and having some instant credibility which i mean it's it's not fake it's real 
Mm. The cred credibility is that real. You know, any day you walk in the door, Mark's going to be here. I'm going to be here. And we, we can point you in the right direction. But bringing you guys on, I think, adds another layer of credibility. For sure. You know? Yeah, I mean, we just, honestly, it's really just, we have a lot of time into it, you know, and it's just us bringing that time and experience here, and we're more than willing to share it with anybody that wants to hear and wants to chat and wants to tell jokes and podcast and do whatever else. I mean, that we love it. That's why we do it. I mean, it's a reason why we eat ramen all winter, so we can do this for a living, yeah, right. you know? Is Taylor um, still stewing over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like... I was hoping he was going to mess up his story and say something that would, like, make <laughs> Damon... Just to qualify Taylor from the turn. Taylor's got I'm like, Taylor's got to find it. Like, this is actually a what you say? What you say? Yeah. <laughs> Can you say that one Can more time? Can you say it one more time I know, clearly I closer like, to the mic? Was I allowed to stop him and I'm sure to ice up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so awesome. I mean, if you're going to get beat with a catch, like, like with, yeah, a, with a bounce... Beat me, all, like, by all means. That's amazing. Like, that, just to have a... I mean, I will say Jimmy Riccardi did not come up from down below for 24 hours I don't doubt straight it. after yeah, that. Yeah, I would have died. Mm. Five is too much. This guy is this, he's this tall. I mean, he's tough. He's like, you know, he's stocky, but. Yeah. Whew. Back, to, back I, to I, the whole instinctual thing, staying on topic, but, but uh, going down a rabbit hole a little bit. Tucker McKay, he has that. He's got a knack for he pointing has the that. bow in the right direction. Yes. Yep. He doesn't. I've never fished with him. I mean, you fish with him. Dave Good, who's been on the podcast, fish with him a lot. And kind of seems like he has the same sort of mentality as our father. Like, keep things simple. Yeah. He doesn't care about, like, You're not gonna the hear latest any, thing. Any, like, I, he knows what works. Right. right. And his, his focus is being in the right water, wherever he is. And he's really, really good at tracking water, too. Yes. Like, like on tuna days, we had the, you know, every two hours – we'd have the satellite um, SST charts yeah. overlay onto the GPS. And it wasn't like just having it. It was knowing how to use it for him, right? And like be, using three updates ago, two updates ago, the current update, and then the, ne you know, the next one after that to see how is the water moving? What, you know, what, what speed is it moving at? What direction is mm -hmm. it moving? And that's how we got into, I mean, we were fishing – West Atlantis, that whole tournament, and then meandered over to Block on day two, just following warm water, following a break. Yeah. And that's when we ran into that sword. That's sweet. Yeah. That's what it takes, though. I mean, just that crazy, that instinct, you know, that's the difference. And he, that guy can wheel a boat like nobody I've yeah, seen, he's too. Incredible. He's a phenomenal captain. He's, he's very safe. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he's got the instinctual, like, like I said, just can point the boat in the right direction. Yeah, I've always had a lot of respect for Tucker. He's an awesome dude. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, he'll, I think he'll be here on the 6th, too. That's, all, that's great. Can hear his side of that story yeah. if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I think Taylor's done hearing it. <laughs> I was done hearing it. Whenever that turned yeah. 2018. <laughs> should, should we do a presentation on it? Yeah. 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 Uh, so I kind of want to – I kind of want to – shift gears and talk about like this shop you know as far as like brands and you know are there any ideas or like things that you guys have talked about that you're trying to attempt to separate yourselves a little bit from with other shops and other we're just talking about fishing yeah. tackle yeah. in general is there anything that you guys have like thought up or you're planning on doing with the shop that make make it a little bit different a little well, kind of edgier new school than shops that have been around for years i think we kind of touched on where my mind goes in regards to that question but i guess it's probably worth touching on in more detail yeah uh just the ability to be like a full outrigger right uh, like you you don't yeah. have other local tackle shops that have the ability to outfit outfit right okay. where you walk in, you get a whole new set of rods for a boat, and, you, and you've never tuned a fish before. And, like, not only can you get the rods, the butts, the reels, but we can put the LT swivels right in the boat for you. Right. We can have Brian and Taylor Sears show up and tell you exactly how to rig your boat up. Yep. You know, and I think that uh, that is probably the biggest differentiator between us and, 
you know, any other local tackle shop is that not only do we have all the things you would need to, to completely outfit, but we have all the expertise to do it as well. Yeah. And even, even like offshore Canyon trips, right? Like putting spare Yamaha filters and this, that everything someone needs to be safe and efficient and have the redundancy right. in parts and equipment yeah, right, right. going you have a group 110 of people to miles offshore. In that have done it all before and have experienced issues out there and have now like have built redundancies and put things in place to prepare for those things happening again yes. right um, and that's all knowledge that you can't really get unless you've done it mm-hmm. or unless you're talking to somebody that's done it yeah just like rigging i mean anchor setups like you you guys could in theory get a phone call and say can you make me an anchor x anchor y chain z rope Right, and it's this, not like this, one this. size or this size. Like, we can customize that right. to a T. We have all that you stuff know, here. Downstairs. Right. Yeah. Every size chain. Too, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's going to be that's gonna be cool. Yeah. yeah. Or rigging a, a whole harpoon basket, yeah. custom. Um, rigging a whole boat, custom. You yeah. know, from order to tuna fishing. Right. You know, getting it all done one one stop, that's pretty incredible. I do think like there's there's definitely some vendors, some manufacturers like Zach Richardson from Zach's Customs, um, like having his stuff in here is you know not like a super big differentiator because you can you know there's a lot of places you can get that stuff, but um, you know we're building a good relationship with him. We're you know we're gonna probably have one of those cool kiosks that he showed at the custom rod uh, building yeah, kiosks. Yeah, so you can and but not only that like we'll have him on the hook like we can call him. He'll be here on the six talking about his product. So we're trying to build relationships with all of our vendors where, you know, if we can't answer a question or if we, you know, can't get to the bottom of an issue that somebody's having with a product, we'll get you the answer like directly from the horse's mouth. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then the media side of things too. I mean, you guys are going definitely full fledged into that. Yeah. The, the media, the the information. Just the public information. I mean, you're gonna the the podcast stuff, and I know there's a lot of other ideas we probably won't get into right now. But things that you guys are are working on the social media side of things, and then the captain's corner. Yeah, I know you guys touched on it, but like, what's the what's kind of the the thought of the captain's corner of what it's gonna look like? Maybe don't you don't necessarily need to get into brands of like what's going in it, but like how is it gonna appear to someone that's gonna walk in here? Well, I think, I mean, it's going to serve multiple purposes, you know, it, in its most simple form. There's going to be a TV up on the wall and a couple, you know, comfy couches and chairs and a coffee table with a bunch of like fishing magazines where if you come in and you want to get spooled up and walk out with your stuff, like you can hang out and enjoy your time here. You can go shop around, sit down, relax, read a magazine, watch TV. But I think that's like in its most simple form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where I see it evolving is like doing what we're doing right now right. in a much more professional environment. Um, Why? What's not professional about this? <laughs> well, I, I actually really I yeah. like what we're doing now because you can see everything really yeah. nice. Yeah, right. But um, but more now, detail, more like yeah, knowledge like, I mean, detail. And also, I mean, the, the podcast you guys do are like a, almost exactly the kind of thing that I'm thinking about. It, but we could even do it, and we probably should be doing it through this podcast forum, right, where we're bringing those charter captain captains in, sport fishing captains in to have these discussions, tell fish stories, yep. explain, you know, what they've learned, and but also the whole service side of things, right? And like, you want to, we should bring Ronnie over and talk Absolutely. about how to service a Yamaha 300, you yep. know, right? And how to do a 100-hour on your outboard. Exactly. Like all exactly. that sort of thing. Right. And it's just going to be a really cool spot to really be able to host these different media events. I feel like having a designated space just from our, I mean, we have a studio. It is a room in my house, right. you know, but podcast, just, podcast yeah. studio, but just having a standalone space, it makes it just so easy. Just turn key. All right. We want to do that workshop yeah. today. Right. Yep. You know, if you're having to set it up every single time you lose motivation, you're too busy doing other things. So I think it's really smart. Like it initially, you know, you're looking at everything you need to fit in here and you're like, Oh man, we could really use that corner space. Over. But I, think so, I think it's so, we'll it I think it's so, I think it's so smart that you just have that in your mind. And that's, 
you know, you're not willing to compromise on that. Right. And I, I think it's going it to be worth up. it. There's no question. Oh, it's yeah. come up yeah. where like, oh, I don't know we if we're going to have enough corner. space to put everything. Like that's a brand new wall we could hang slat wall on. We'd have so much extra space. But, but it's important to the us. The value of the captain's corner, I think, trumps that, right? Yeah. We can figure out other, other places to display things and other creative ways where we can, you know, pack everything in so it's all very nice and organized and in one smaller area but maintain yep. the captain's corner because I think it's it's a necessity. I almost think of it too like this is like crazy I don't know this is just the way my brain works but like you go drop your car off at I don't know Ford you get an oil change you go and you hang out in that little like waiting area like I picture it as that too like people you know they're coming they're getting yeah. you know yeah. 25 horse and the guys next door run fluids through it and they need a half hour, like, they can come up here, they can mess around. Especially can... right at the beginning, too, where, right. like, you know, you haven't even seen it yet. Like, right. Go check out the lounge area upsta- right. upstairs while you're waiting 30 minutes. Grab some coffee. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's super smart. It's Hang out. Set your we got some really cool uh, topographic maps um, that are going up there, too. So, you know, kind of showing people different spots and, you know, where to be, when to be. Like, we can literally just... We're going to do, like, white, whiteboard paint over it, too. So yeah. we could even talk, like, we'd be sitting down doing a podcast like we're doing now, and somebody wants to tell a fishing story. Or show a Mark. spread or where to yeah, ride bars. Yeah, or where to Maybe drift. Mark's not going to put an X on the screen <laughs> yeah. where, where he's fishing. Yeah, but, you know, this is some the of us guy. might be willing to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. I think Mark needs a, his own hat that's, like, a picture of him holding a fish with a background scribbled out. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, there you go. Fit it pretty perfectly. That'd be actually really funny. That would be funny. The face, just just a hat of someone holding a bass yeah. with the face in the background all scribbled <laughs> out. Everybody always says that, too. They're like, why don't you ever, you know, post pictures, you know, between, like, the Instagram and the Facebook? And, yeah. you know, it's... I don't really like, you know, care to, you know, from like say, oh, hey, look at the 40, you know, two inch bass I caught, you know, it's awesome, cool getting it. You know, I love giving the guys here the info, you know, hey, go, you know, throw this loaded Cordell Redfin, you know, on a low tide off of Plymouth, you know, from the rocks and catch a 40 inch bass, you know, that when they come back in, it feels great. But you, know? you like yeah. it for yourself. Like Mark, Mark isn't about posting things because he's, he likes to enjoy his you moment know? for himself it's competitive everyone's he's, different he's, yeah but he's know, less about different. like sharing it like he doesn't yeah. care what other people think of him yeah he's more concerned about like that was awesome for me yeah it's not like and, i need to let everybody else know you know hey as long as you know it's I get enjoying that. the I night out on the water you know of side of it you know no moon dark skies calm water you know just catching the bass you know that's that's what it's about totally you getting know? excited it's like it's more it's more about like the fish than yeah. hosting the fish absolutely right i know where we can get mark guys we just need to give mark about three and a half beers <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll tell us yeah. everything uh, all his ins and outs i don't know <laughs> maybe it did take about 13 and a half beers yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, i love funny. it that's funny yeah, that's going to be cool. And and you have, you know, it looks like you're going to have a little bit of space too to do some smaller, you know, presentation type of things. And We'll have space. All, all yeah. the, everything that's here is a lot of it's going up on the wall once that side's done. We did yep. this side, the middle, now we're on that side. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be tons of space. And, I mean, we really blow it up and we build a lot of demand for big seminars. We got the whole showroom. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can always back boats out, put some sort of, I don't want to say a stage, but some sort of area yeah. right together and host a big seminar. I think that's kind of what's, what April 6th yeah, is going to look like yeah, anyway. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. All those boats in the showroom will be out of there. So what are you guys, what are the big ticket items leading up to the grand opening of the tackle shop on the 6th? Like big things to accomplish yeah. for us. Uh, we have the, the the retail apparel side of the store that we just need to essentially button down. Button down. Button down. Yeah. Um, Everything's here. We got a couple more. I do have some more tackle stuff that's coming in. Got some wolf pack stuff that isn't here yet. Um, other than that, we're we're pretty much ready to go. That back wall in the captain's corner needs to be like assembled. Um, we're at the point now where we can really start to dial things in, though, I think. Do a little, I don't know, we could even put together, like, mock customers where, you know, somebody comes up and says they want to be spooled up. And I mean, I do think it's probably going to be worth thinking about some of the operational things, especially for that mm. one day, because I think mm. it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Right? Um, I think it's going to be, like, all hands on deck servicing customers and making sure that, 
people are, they feel like they're being serviced and shown the store because there's only so many of us and I think there's gonna be a lot more of them. Right. Yeah. Um, and like building out the packages, so we're doing like, you know, buy a new boat. Like we're building out packages like, you know, a thirty five hundred, a five thousand dollar package, a seventy five hundred dollar package. Yeah, whether like, it's come bronze, out here, silver, gold package, and or we whatever will outfit we outfit your it. whole boat for that amount. Inshore, offshore. You know, sit with us, we'll go through the whole thing with you. Um, you want like an inshore gold package that you right. know, comes with an X amount of dollars that you can spend at the tackle shop as well as a certain rod package or whatever. You know, we could That's a, a cool great point. idea. Yeah. yeah. Great idea. Yeah, because we hear a lot like and because we've been in business for so long and we've got such a great base of customers, you know, we kind of get a little of everything. Um, so we get like the new boater that's just like, you know, wants to get their kids, their family, their friends on the water. Um, and then we've got the people that are like buying their forever boat. You know, they just retired and they've been, you know, kicking around with the, you know, the same boat for the last 20 years. And like, I want that boat. I know that's the boat I want. You know, whether it's ordering a custom uh, Jones Brothers from Donnie Jones uh, or even some of our Tidewaters, like that's the boat they want. That's the boat they're going to retire on and they want it outfitted. Um, so that's kind of like what we've envisioned. Um, so it's cool. It gives us the opportunity to do that. How's the, uh, to go back to Citro Boatworks a little bit, how's the relationship going to work between the two shops moving forward? So the yeah you know, they are you know they they're separate yeah um, but but they but we labor share yeah so when we're when when we're slow here you know they can help over there like today Marty one of our technicians over at Situate helping them out with a couple jobs when it was dead of the winter and we need a boat we need boats bottom painted and shrunk wrap we brought guys from Situate over here so they're separate but we're all in the same family you know Got so it. we're we're like cousins. Got it. I'd say like yeah. more like an adopted brother. <laughs> fair, to say, fair to say that things will like stay that way, or do you think that th that'll evolve? I like this inter. This I like these. Yeah. Great. Yeah, right. What's that? The well, questions I, back I, and I, forth. I, I, you. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know. Well, when you say evolve, I mean we'll, we'll always probably be be separate. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. That's that was kind of where my question came. Yeah. From. You know, but we're still. You know, we. You know, we're. With Situate and Monahans, that's a pretty good chunk of service. Oh yeah, of yeah. service, uh, you know, bandwidth for the South Shore. Totally. Um, I mean, it's so cool too. Like, like to have the opportunity. Like we had a, a thirty foot, um, a thirty two Tidewater, gorgeous oh, right. boat, yeah. absolutely gorgeous boat, three hundred fifty thousand dollar boat. I mean, you, you want to go for a sea trial, you want to run the boat, mm -hmm. so. You know, having Situate gives us the ability to leave that boat in the water. And when I have customers that are interested in that boat, be like, hey, man, meet me down Situate on this day. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> I think I the Situate guy, guys liked really it, though. Yeah, I know. The Situate guys liked it because they always want to know where the keys were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was the fine. hours were always a little off. Yeah. <laughs> I called Brian. I'm like, did this have a quarter tank? Hey, what's this 32 tie water anchored up in yeah. the gut? Yeah. And yeah. Bass fishing on lunch. Break. Did we get swivel rod holders <laughs> yeah. when we ordered this? These like, weren't in here last time. I called Brian one day. I'm like, didn't this have a half tank of gas in it? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I had a guy, he's like, you know, I'm buying this boat. I want to make sure it, you know, it, it handles well in some rough water. And I'm like, all right. So we had like a tentative date circled on the calendar and then we had a blow come through. It was a little earlier and I'm like, all right, man, today's our day. Like you want to see what it's like, you know, let's go for it. And I was confident in the boat. I'd been on it, you know, whatever. It's a great boat, it's a dry riding boat. And uh, we put them on it and it's howling. And, you know, we come out and <laughs> you guys know how it is coming through situate there. Like, you know, there's rollers and they're like, you know, six, seven foot rollers. And he kind of looked at me and he's like, are we... I'm like, yeah, we're going. Like, we're going to go for it. And he's like, you serious? And I'm like, yeah, man, once we get out there, it'll lay down a little bit. It's just, you know, kind of choppy. And, uh, right yeah, it stacks up there. It was a strong tide, too. And we came out of there and, you know, it gave us the ability to put that customer on that boat in that condition. And he loved it. I mean, it was like a dry riding boat. You know, those bow flares on those things, everything pushes out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's cool having such a boat works there. I mean, we did uh, – um, Demo day there. Demo day with high fields. Uh, those are, our, you know, our ribs. Um, it's funny. When I first started wa working here, I'm like, oh, these are just like dinghies. You know, they're inflatables. And, you know, I grew up on fiberglass boats. 
Dude, you go out on those things, they are badass. I've always wondered. I've, we've never spent yeah. much time on those. They are cool. Like, really cool. We want to get some footage of us chasing some wreck tunas around on one of the big high fields. Yeah. I mean, we just got to be careful. With the gaff, <laughs> yeah. Inside of that thing. Yeah, downstairs right now is a 30-foot inflatable with twin 250s. Jesus. I mean, we've got that thing completely rigged up. Twin. Can a tuna hook go through one of those? Yeah. 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 A gaff would. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Yeah, if you get like a demon fish, it could be good. Yeah, but we're gonna do There's it. There's guys in the Mediterranean that do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. like a thing. They chase. They chase wreck fish. And, well, I don't know what. I think they're all wreck fish out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the size limit is uh, any is, size. Yeah, any size. Like yeah. size. Yeah. <laughs> Big, small, is. anywhere in between. Oh. So it's cool. Like you know, we we put a bunch of the boats in down situate. Um, we had a bunch of food and drinks, and it gave us the opportunity to get customers out on the water where it's you know it's all about um you know experiencing the boat i would never want someone to buy a boat that they were like uncertain about it's a big investment for a lot of people yeah it is so you got to put them on the boat you gotta you know go through the you know go through the boat make sure it's and there's no other place to do that besides on the water yeah. so situus gives us on the sales side of thing the platform to do that and then on the service side of things like servicing the bigger boats it's great like you know Service and being able to haul them out, you know, you know, Ronnie, I think Ronnie and Garrett use it a bunch. Yeah. You know, we service the uh, the uh, Marshfield, you know, harbormaster boat. So they brought them there, hauled them out there. That now they don't got to trail the boat from Marshfield right. to here. Pop it in, pop it out. It's on the road. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, and nice and protected back in yeah. there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I love it back there. I just think the like looking back at Situate from across the harbor yeah, it's, it's, a so cool. it's such a different perspective it it's really cool it is it's nice too and i don't want to leave my boat there and i don't want to leave from hull i can leave it at situate and then i can run south yeah it's nice it's going to be nice for us to be able to uh extend our fishing season a little bit you know i mean we're penny pinching yep. every season i mean but like, you should be i mean that's, we, you, that's ha- you have you to. have to you have to so that's going to be really nice um uh, Really nice asset for us. So yeah, those very docks are great over there. You yeah, know, power's there, water's there. Yep, easy. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, this has been great. What else do we want to chat about? He's still heated. <laughs> yeah, he's still. I'm good, I'm good like, now. I'm settled so down. <laughs> settled down. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm just looking around here, looking at the brands pretty much have every major local brand or you know the major brands i think i think one thing i mean not to not to talk about ourselves i'm not a huge fan of that but no you should though we want you talking about yourself you're part being of the, i mean the hands family now we're yeah. we're a charter boat we're a charter fleet so we keep things as simple as possible as systematic as possible and yeah you have to have a complete offering to the customers which you guys have um but i think for us to be able to help streamline that to make your jobs easier and make your customers coming in be able to go over to one wall and be like all right what's the what's the type of fishing you're willing to do or you want to do right and just have like the simple necessity package already there on the wall is is definitely gonna set you apart. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I've really been into any shops up here, anyways. I mean, like Florida is a whole different animal, right. obviously. Right. Um, but to have like species specific and tactic specific organization within the shop is going to uh, is going to be huge. You know, um, time efficiency, all that sort of thing. I mean, that's. And, and like not forgetting things. Yeah. Right. I, I know for sure it's happened to me multiple times where I'm going to it. I go to a tackle shop because I need X, Y, and Z. And then and you leave, pull out of the uh, parking lot and you're like, and, oh, I needed A, yeah. B, and C too. Yep. And if they're all right next to each other, it makes it a lot harder to forget. And it's them. the same thing right. in our like day kit on the boat. I don't want to be running back and forth from the console to the cockpit or the cockpit to the wheelhouse right. grabbing a piece of chafe tube grabbing a piece of crimp grabbing a crimp grabbing my cutters my everything is consolidated i have just enough for what i need for that trip right and i'm saving time right i feel like bringing that into the tackle shop 
At least as much as you can. As I much mean, as you can. There's limits to that. It yeah, becomes to- difficult. Totally, but you know. Um, it's going to be super helpful. You know, there's definitely areas you have to bundle terminal gear together and bundle, you know, swimming lures together, all that sort of thing. But the way that it's all being organized, you know, we appreciate from the perspective of doing it every single day. I mean, right. just for us to walk in here, if I've only got 20 minutes right. to just go over the wall, pull off a skein of fluoro crimps, everything I need to get me through another week of fishing or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, just the convenience factor and the organization factor is, is very nice. Um, I'm excited to be able to spool our reels here. And yeah. I think that's going to, I think that's going to kind of be a focus of ours early on. Like as this opens, we have a lot of gear that we need to prep. So we're kind of thinking using that as like selfishly to help us out, but also anyone, that, anyone that wants to come in yeah. and yeah, treat that as a workshop a while we're putting our own gear together. Right. Whether, whether we're helping them to put their gear together or if they're just coming to watch you guys exactly. and Spool how you something. guys do it specifically on your own gear. Yeah. I think that's, that's just a, a level of confidence that we can instill in our customers. Like if this is how these guys are doing it on their gear, I can't imagine doing it another way. Right. Right. Yeah, I, well, it's like that kid we had the other day. He came in. He's like, "Will you tie my FG knots?" And we were like, "Well, yeah." Yeah, but right. what, what, what we, we want to show you better yeah. is that, like, if you break off, yes, out there, when you you're able off. to retie an yeah. FG, right? Totally. Um, like, yeah. Am I happy to tie the FG so you're ready to like hit the beach or hit the boat and chase wreckfish around? Absolutely. Yeah. But. Why don't we, in that process of me tying the FG, I'll walk you through the process so that you can do it, yes. right? Yeah. Um, and doing it in, in a multifaceted way, you know, doing it in the shop day to day, but also having the drive to create that content right. and have it live and exist somewhere is right. huge. Right, right, right. Um, and I feel like, you know, a lot of shops, a lot of places all around the country or the world are doing that. But to be honest, you have to do it now. You have to do it now. And yeah. you guys have a crew that, you know, has the reputation to be able to do it. You know, people are going to take that content seriously right, right, right away. Right, right. They're not just going to be like, oh, it's some, you know, dude that works in a shop that barely fishes. I mean, you're awake for 24 hours a day between work and <laughs> yeah. fishing, living on monster. offshore experience. <laughs> you're yeah. insanely passionate. Brian's like, a jack of all trades. Literally. Um, I don't know. It just it just adds a lot more value to that. You know, yeah, even if absolutely. you even if you don't get you know the the views you want right off the bat, you're getting the the customers that you. They're they're valuable views. Exactly. You know, it, like and that's I think feeds right into why I think the partnership with you guys is so valuable because, you know, whether it's five, six, seven thousand people that follow, you know the multitude of different social media outlets that you guys have, it, you know, you might look at somebody who has 500,000 followers and like, that's awesome, unreal. But are they specific followers? Yeah. Yeah. Are they like, are they like actually you, you followers? guys have say, I'm just throwing a number out there, say 6,000 like hardcore Northeast tuna fishermen right. yes. that are following you. Right. So it like that, there's a big gap between that and just, Someone who's liking something because you posted a big fish getting dropped on right. the boat or right. whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna be a loyal return customer that you're gonna build a relationship with, and hopefully they're gonna be in here telling stories at the right. captain's corner yeah, that's you know, what once about. a week. Right. And half those people, I'll probably learn stuff from. Mark will learn stuff from. They, they'll probably learn stuff from us as well. But yep. like how Taylor learned how to bait a daytime swordfish on the surface from you. <laughs> All right, you know? right, let's move on. I can see I can see where this is going. <laughs> let's move on. It's all right. I'll get it's you with them. A, I'm gonna me. get it's you with a, a swordfish bumper sticker or something. But yeah. oh. I told you guys, like I've been following you guys for years. Like, you know, whether it was on social or whatever, like you know, so when we started ta- having this conversation, I was like, yes, like 1,000%. Like, obviously, you guys do a great job with, like, you know, the content, the podcast. And I told you, I know this is weird for you guys to hear, but, like, I got buddies of mine that are, like, religious. Like, listen to the same episode, like, five, six, seven times. Like, notepads. Yeah. Yeah. Like, truly notepads. Yeah. I mean, like, you see at it at this the point, Safari seminar, too. Like, that room was packed. Packed. Yeah. Packed. 
I think it wasn't packed for everyone's seminar, but it was packed for yours. I just, I think, you know, well, the podcast, um, how do I put this? It's filled, we're by no, a lot we're, of gaps. we by no means consider ourselves like a pen, like a pinnacle in anything that we do. Right. We just are pretty consistent with what we do, but with generally how the fishing community and outdoor community can be, you know, there's a lot of speculation as to how you are or how you do things. And, um, the podcast, I feel, you know, I can, I'm not, I'm not going to name names, but like I can count on, I can't even count on my hands and toes how many people that we kind of had like a gray area relationship with before. Gray area meaning like, you're not sure if they like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a competitor. You're not sure you if you know. like them because you, you know, don't know anything about each other. Right. right. And they're they're you know you might hear stories about them saying something about you that you're like you know. Did but to even, hear did that even actually happen? That they, levels off. Yeah, it levels it. You know, it's just authentic. Mm -hmm. It's authentic. You know, it's not a like this isn't a scripted conversation whatsoever. This was a, this whole thing came to fruition because you sent me a text, and we were like. I, I know your character and the type of person that you are. And as soon as you walk in here, you get that vibe off, ev off everybody. And, and the podcast kind of allows you, gives you a platform to show that. Right. Yeah. Um, and breaks down those barriers. So we're friends with guys that five, 10 years ago, you know, we're looking up to them or we're like, Oh man, like, you know, questioning, like, how's he doing that? What's, you know, how is he really in real life sort of thing? And right. it's, uh, it's just created a lot more transparency that way, yeah. which we've appreciated, and and it's great to hear that other people are appreciating appreciating it. To be the the coolest part about doing the podcast is the we get so many just messages, texts from guys that say that exact. We should do something with thing. those messages, like lots of them. You yeah. know, just yeah. constant positive feedback. And when we started this. We started it at my old house in the basement, just me and him talking about what we were conf like what our we were confident in yeah. knowledge wise. Right. And uh, we didn't really know where it was gonna go, what people were gonna think about it. We didn't really care. We didn't really care. No. You know, we we're just like we're just gonna put this out there and see what happens. The, the key to a good podcast is doing it for yourself, not doing it for the listeners, because then the listeners love what you have to say. It, yeah. it comes off yeah. as completely authentic, which it is, yep. because you're doing it for yourself, right? We're just having these authentic conversations, and yeah. it's... It was like the first time you guys came in. We talked for, what, an hour and a half? Right. Yep. And we were like, yep. that would have been a great podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a conversation, like, right. you know? So it's cool to see. It was the same, you know, same sort of feeling for us. You know, we've... We all know how tough partnerships can be in business, and it's very rare that you just get like a complete dovetail on right. ideas right, right right off the bat, and you kind of organically set expectations for each other, and mm -hmm. you trust each other, and that's the minority right. in all of this. Right. I mean, no, that's well we've said. We've had very well said failed partnerships. I'm sure you guys have as well, be it in fishing, be it in other things. It's a tough thing. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. egos get in the way, um, you know, all that sort of thing starts to develop, but we haven't felt that way at all. And Taylor and I, you know, not to get too personal with this whole thing, we've been like between him and I very strict on that. Like yeah. we don't, we don't want, like, yeah, like we want to use stuff and partner with people that really make a good product or really you know, have a great service or have a great reputation. We gotta protect we're not just going to, yeah, we're you not know. just going to partner with someone because we're getting free shit. Everyone right? has more money. You know, right. you can jump from money to money to money and it doesn't help. It no. really doesn't help right. at the end right. of the day. Like it, it's it, initially, you know, you might be happy because it can pay some bills, but it's, I mean, just thinking about, I can't say names, but we were, I know where the, you're going. A recent seminar we were at, we probably had at least 10 brands come up to us and like throw themselves at us and like you know stop using what you're using and yeah. use what we sell right. because we'll do xyz for you and it's kind of we'll buy you a new truck i've yeah. never met you before in my life how about we just like let's just chat first and like right see, see where this goes like you know or yeah 
Yeah, you know, sure. I think coming out. from a place of like humility and like just like right. knowing knowing what you're good at, but what like don't be cocky about it, you yeah. know. And yeah. I think I feel like everyone at this table has has that, right? It's like hundred percent. We're all right. good at what we do, but we're you not. You know like, your lane. We're not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, we know we're we know our lane. We're not. We're not out here like pumping ourselves up. Yeah, like I'm no you know? surf caster. Yeah, right. right. I'm no feather merchant. Right. Although <laughs> you know, we right. were like surf casters in college, technically. Being able yeah. to be humble. Fishing like off the maritime ship. Leaning on Mark when I need to. And, like, if he's got somebody that comes in, he's like, he knows exactly. He's like, that's that's you, Connor. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you know, not the canyons. It's, you know, going to Connor. Yeah. It's like, you know. Yeah. But still being able to to do everything, right? It's like, you're probably best to talk to this customer, but if needed, Mark can splice, Mark can do all that totally. stuff, you know? So, like, And the longer you do this, the more those skills are going to cross. And, right. And then know, we'll just be two have, people that are able to talk about Keep everything. building that redundancy right. that Brian and Mark have been doing since the beginning of this whole thing. Right. It's yeah. huge. Right. You know, we struggled to do that ourselves. You know, we're very lucky that, you know, our father is still very capable and amazing fisherman. You know, he's stepping back a little bit. We've built some redundancy between the two of us. We've pulled on Ben, who's, like, to find someone with work ethic like that nowadays, it's so rare, I feel. And not yeah, to knock like a really good not to knock that, but, like, he builds redundancy in our company, and that's huge. But we're not just – we don't just stay there. It's not just status quo. Like, we're – we have a couple of people we're bringing on this year to, you know, fill in the gaps – OG needs a day off. We need a day off. Family time, whatever. Days off. Yeah, <laughs> kill no them days all. Off. I'd be happy to Harpoon. fill a gap here hey, if you need more it. More than welcome. Yeah. You know, especially once you guys get oh, this place. Dude, it's going to be a bit. It's going to be a bit. This summer. It's going to be know, a while. Take a day off. There we but, <laughs> help Taylor yeah, right now. Uh, You'll be done. surf fishing with him before the doors open. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What I do think, you know, and I know I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Once we get this whole thing going, and it'll never be on cruise control, or it will take a while for us to be on cruise control, we need to do some sort of Monahan's like crew yeah. multi boat trip oh, every yeah. year. Yeah. I think that would just be awesome. I think it would be a great give back for all the experienced people you have here um, and just build that relationship between us. And it'll also help Peter build Down redundancy. The more you get those guys on the water, the more knowledge they're going to have, too. Absolutely. Right. So you tell them to slam rod holders in a boat. They've been there. They've seen right. it. They understand why. Right. You know? Right. Um, Garrett's done it. Garrett Garrett was, uh, he worked on, fish. yeah, he's yeah, worked he on fishes. a couple big, a yeah. couple commercial boats. Uh, yeah, no. But yeah, it would be awesome. I think it'd be super appreciated by them, too. Yeah. Um, and those guys are like, they just work, 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 work. Dude, and it's they like, eat, sleep, breathe this thing. Yeah. Like, but it's that's so cool need. to see. Like it's great. Be good camaraderie. Maybe put Garrett and he on different boats. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but yeah no, no, I cool. think it'd be good. What are you guys? Uh, what are you most excited for this season? Oh, this season. Yeah. This season. Fishing wise, or like company wise, or what? Just well, in general. Yeah, fishing wise. Mm. Or in general. I'm always, I'm always looking forward to seeing what the bait looks like on our first week or two out for us like that's everything like those first few scouting trips just like the it sounds like so simple and by the I, end of may by the end June. of may yeah like you, i'm always excited to like bring my wife and the dog in the river and like have a fun casual day and she thinks i'm just kind of relaxing yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, all right, the herring's the setting up turn. here. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. The are turning. yeah, it's like a silent scout. Yeah, yeah. I always look forward to that. You know, Ryan's just, never only doing one thing. Yeah. He's like, are you listening to me right now? You know, it's like every year is so different. You know, it's, you know, to put tuna fishing in perspective, like we did over 200 fish two years ago. And then last year we did just over 100 you know, it was still awesome fishing. We still had just as much boat, to the like boat. Leader. You know, right, just a lot of that's like, did the wreck fish come in? Correct. Right? Correct. You know, yeah. those are the those are those little things that we just kind of like put off to the side that we're excited to see. But for me personally, year to year, it's just like it's building that knowledge base on the patterns of what's going on. Like even just like the inshore bait and how that, you know, builds confidence on what's going on inside and what's going on on the bank and what's going on at the race and just i love i love that whole like puzzle right. and trying to and that whole like chess game trying to figure that out because it's different every single year it's like you have to relearn it every yeah. single year yeah. um, that's what you're most excited about though the yeah i mean the, like the puzzle I like, challenge in the beginning i like yeah i would i like that 
I mean, yeah. like the catching them and like putting smiles on faces just kind of is, I love that part of the job. But Ice for me, cake. for me personally, it's, I'm in competition with myself. Like how can I better myself every single so, year? So what are you looking for? Like you, I, you're, you're going into the river looking, trying to see what the bait's like. Like, what do you want to see? First thing's the birds. You know, if the right birds are there, you're like, all right, the fish are here, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. For me in the river, it's like, I want to see herons. I want to see, you know, terns. I want to see egrets. Yeah. All that sort of thing. And if I'm not seeing that, I'm starting to get a little bit worried or right, like where is, is, is it? Is or biomass in here? Or is no? it, we just not haven't got to the, you know, the right moon phase to push all that stuff inside. Um, Cause that, I mean, the, the river. The herring and, runs. In the areas right. around Huge. there. You know, right in front of the harbor, up to mine it, those general areas. Like if the fish aren't there and the bait's not there, it totally drastically changes our charter season. Yeah. You know, we're going now. We're going twenty miles to the race and doing that whole thing. And to it's Boston. Like, it right. just changes yeah. Bay, our whatever a third yeah. of our year. You know, so when we see that, like right off the rip, when it's good, it's like, oh, thank God. Yes. You know, we're gonna be able to make this an easy you know, third of the year. My, my, I guess, thing that I look forward to the most is, uh, you know, there's so many days that are the same chartering. It's like you go out, catch a fish. It's a great day. Everyone has fun. But then there's like maybe a handful of days that just stick out that are different from the rest. It's like a battle that you just may not forget your whole life. Right. Or it's like, one harpoon shot that you made or a bite that you see or like losing a or fish. Losing like something a fish. learning something yeah. epic happened or you know you see a blitz the the one day that you know you see a blitz like we've had years we haven't seen a single tune on the surface mm -hmm. no, i you know, know exactly so like those like there's always a handful to maybe two handfuls of things that happen through the 150 days or whatever we're fishing that just stick out that you have no idea what's going to happen. That's the thing that I look forward to the yeah. most. It's when like you, when you this, see it, this you know, variable yes, thing. Like two years crazy. ago, it was that when we first got on those wreck fish on the middle of the bank up on top on the troll bite. And like the first day we're like, let's just troll. We got like eight. Yeah. Hmm. And, it, and it was just like, dude, this so is going to be fun. insane. And there was two boats out there, hmm. you know, and then it turned into a hundred boats. But just like that first day was just savage. When you get so to like, experience a once in a lifetime day with customers, I mean, you all know, you all have your once in a lifetime right. days, your swordfish days, crazy right. bass yeah. days, mm. monster be fish off the beach, Seeing whatever. people who don't do but it. When typically. you get to share that experience with someone, it's like, the bond that's there is yeah, yeah, yeah. indescribable. Yeah. And, it's, and it happens like so quickly. Oh, totally. You know? Like we have, we have customers like an example, thirty. Our, we had one day we had thirty four to the boat, and we were home at like one o'clock yeah. in the app. We we left them biting. We were driving away from them at like marlin speed, <laughs> and still getting bites. Yeah, and those guys, blue collar union electricians that now do like residential work on my house. They stop right. by and say right. hello. Right. They, you know, come by, have a beer, whatever. It's, come hunt in my backyard. Come hunt in my backyard. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. All those sorts. Of, yeah, that one. Yeah, happen. right. <laughs> Maybe. Get whoa, whoa, whoa. real. Get real. <laughs> but no, just it's, it, it, it's, it's special. You know, like I don't really know any other professions other than what you guys are diving into headfirst here. You're going to have those moments. You're not going to be on the boat with them, but they're going to be coming in and be like, dude, you told me to get 130 fluoro and these 80 hooks and have that shit ready that for day. a calm right. day. And I was yeah. the only bite and it was the biggest fish of my life. Yeah. And you get to share that with someone. Right. Where they buy a boat. That's a testimonial booth. That was one thing that I was thinking about when I walked in here. You guys should, which I wish I did when I opened a shop, was having something for like recommendations to start. Yeah. That's Whether it's idea. an anonymous recommendation thing or something so that they may not feel pressure to what they put on there. But something that, like, when they leave, and maybe you give them a free, whatever, hat or a free something to do the recommendation. Like, fill out the form or yeah. whatever it may be yeah. of what they're looking for in your shop. You One know? other thing that would be great, too, for the captain's corner is just having a wall of fame. 
Oh, like I remember, cool pictures. I missed that. I like at at Belson's, and like I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys have no problem me mentioning Pete and no. stuff. No, no he's been, I mean, not. he's he's a Citroen no, guy. Right. It's yeah. like he's one of the best people there is. I love Pete. But the wall of fame there, it was like, especially as a kid, as a young oh, angler, young best. fisherman, like to walk in and like have your see yourself there and get to share that story, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. He would do it old school, too. He had that, like, you know, the Polaroid. The Polaroid. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, everything. the best. Right on it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. I want to think about doing, like, yeah. old school like that. We could do right. old school and new school. I mean, you could, if anybody wants to put their catch, maybe somebody comes in here, has a state record or a, a pin fish or whatever, their first kid's fish or something, you know? Yeah. Well, we, we ran a fishing and uh, Instagram thing last year with that. People were posting their pictures, oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then we'd give out uh, free gift certificates. Yeah. So yeah. we got a lot of people well, on high fields. A lot yeah. of them were on the inflatables. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. That's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. But yeah, I think I think there's a lot of potential here. We're excited for the season. We're excited yeah. for this partnership. Going back to what. I'm most excited for him. Another thing I'm most excited for is to potentially catch a shad this year. <laughs> you know they're going to be jumping in on this this year. I know. I wish we could get. I'm a little I worried about Mark. I, Mark I have a feeling Mark's just going to absolutely us. annihilate when he goes and does it. <laughs> He's got a spot. Have you been shad fishing? I shad fish. Oh shh. Sh I'm not good at it. I mean, oh, I did. one's good at it. <laughs> I did. So actually, the biggest one I hooked, I snagged. There's some yeah. guy who comes yeah. in here who's you good at it. What's his name? Your buddy who came in like. Right before we moved everything up. Jed? For shad fishing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Older guy. Maybe that guy, thing, John, but... The thing I love about it most is the challenge. But back to, like, the whole chess match and right off the rip in the season, understanding, you know, what's going on with the bait and what we're starting to see in the migration. That is the head of the migration. You see the everything. herring right. there. Right. So you're starting... You know like, what's there. You see the, sometimes bass there. You see the herring there. Yep. Just being, for us... You know, we love experiencing every aspect of the saltwater fishing that we have around here. So to be able to start at the end of April and go all the way to October and get December to see now. the whole migration of everything right. and where the where the head of it starts. I mean, you're like part and then of it. see where yeah. it leaves. Yeah, you feel not, it's not like you're you're a thousand. It's not, you're not percent. just watching it. Yeah, you're a part you're of a the train. What's cool with shad fishing is like we see last year we saw a lot of herring move up. We actually saw them move up, and then we saw them leave, and then all of a sudden the bass bite started That's in the cool. river. Yeah. yeah, we timed our whole the whole start of our bass charter fishing season with the scouting that we did during shad fishing. I would love which a lot of people don't think about. You in, know, to like the nine hundred line. I, there's no way they're going to make it to the bank. Yeah, no. But I feel like that would be the best tuna bait. No, yeah, 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 you can't kill them. <laughs> yeah, American shad, you can't. But hickory shad, you can of caught a lot of hickory shad. Oh, yeah. you can get those will do well, do okay in a live wall. I would put a stick hickory shad down. Yeah. They don't do very well in the live wall. No, they die. No, they die pretty quick. But um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited for all this. So before we wrap up, why don't you guys kind of go through grand opening, all the dates, and how people can stay in tune with the dates, the grand opening, website, social, all that sort of stuff. Make sure you get the mic perfect. Get the mic. Get it ready. <laughs> uh, so definitely follow us on Instagram, Monahan's Marine on Instagram. Uh, we'll be doing some updates there on giveaways and things that, um, you know, in the coming weeks that we have going. we got a lot of things planned. Uh, but April 6th will be the grand opening. Um, we're going to have a lot of different vendors here. Um, you guys will be here. Seminars. All things fish and tackle. We also have our grand, I um, mean, our open house downstairs. Uh, so we'll have a lot of um, discounts and promotions and things going on downstairs in the shop as well. Um, but yeah, man, we're excited. It's going to be hopping up here. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're excited. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be crazy up here. We're excited for everyone to see it. Uh, it's obviously been a, you know, a work in progress for us here. We have a lot of late nights and. A lot of uh, still more to go. Yeah, ready, guys. A, yes. a lot of colored debates on where, what, when, why. Um, Soft baits. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. The sabikis are completely Brian dialed in. It's <laughs> been a lot of time spent on sabiki. If rings. I order any more soft plastics, Brian's going to lose his mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, or and I'm ordering more. How many rubber so worms do we need in this shop? Space. No live bait needed. We'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh.
So yeah, we're excited, man. I mean, it's been a uh, it's been a quite the journey. Um, but yeah, April six is like our official go time, baby. Like, That's awesome. It's like torture coming up here every day and just being like, I want to go fishing. Yep. So we're yeah. excited to be able to well, a to have the Yamahas on the boat, and b to be able to, you know basically have our boat open for anyone that wants yeah. to see like how we have stuff rigged. You want to check out the engines. You want to see how, you know, we lay everything out if they're, you know, purchasing a new boat through you guys or whether they're rigging and tweaking right. what they already have. Um, yeah, I can we're really see, excited. Like, podcasts on the back of the boat at the dock, like yeah. doing oh. service on an engine or something like that. Yep. Oh know? God. So just to, like to add on to the open house information to, tease a little bit as to what our partnership is is going to be here moving forward um we're going to be doing workshops here at monahan's we'll be here for the open house obviously but we're also going to be doing some uh throughout the season you know pre more pre and post season once our charter season winds down coming in and doing like tactic specific stuff here um the podcast obviously and then we're excited to be doing i mean because we do we have our Patreon crew, right. you know, our 50 or so members that we have fishing reports with and all that throughout the season. But we're excited to be doing that with Monahans too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're yeah, going to kind of mold those two worlds. Exactly. Together. Be able to do weekly fishing reports, kind of a pulse on what's going on and, and centralizing a lot of that through here is going to be going to be a lot of fun for us too. So yeah. we're looking forward to it. Um, those fishing reports, it's all going to be about Mark's numbers on the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this week in Mark's report. Yeah. Yeah. I went nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, shop people, the shop's been so busy, I haven't had any time to fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, oh, oh, that's great. Yeah. No, we're excited, man. Line yeah. chat's going to look good with those Yamahas on the back of it. Yeah, we're stoked. We're stoked. Anything else? <sighs> I think that was good. Thank you yeah. guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really guys. appreciate this. Yeah. Really Good looking forward to, to it. Be great. Um, check out Mon Hands online, Instagram. It's going to be a great shop, and uh, it's going to it's going to be awesome to have all the the service parts, engines, boat sales, tackle all in one central hub. So yeah, it's uh, it's a great resource for the South Shore boating community and the entire northeast really so excited to be partnered with you guys we're going to end this conversation on og's three words of fishing wisdom remember you can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water always trust your instincts and the last one you'll have to keep listening stay tight everybody thank you very much for tuning in to the sea rose fishing podcast if you would like more information about today's guest our episode and show sponsors or if you want to order hats and apparel please visit our website at seabrosfishing.com you can also stay up to date in all the latest Seabros fishing content and podcast episodes by following us on Instagram at Seabros Fishing. Finally, to book a trip with us through our family run charter fishing company, please visit massbayguides.com or see our latest updates and fishing reports by following Mass Bay Guides on Instagram and Facebook.